come to a realm where the pulse of sports thrills and the spark of technology sizzles. Join Ronald Unk Bolware and your charismatic host, Jay, a a.k.a. Jonathan Anderson. Together, they unpack the latest in sports and technology. This is Noonish Sports and Tech. What's going down? What is going down? What's going down? We back in the building after a bit of a situation yesterday, man. You know, hate to have situations. But we are back in the saddle, man. Got to finish out this uh, eighth episode of season 10. What's going down? This is J.A. I'm your host, a.k.a. Jonathan Anderson, man. Over here chilling right now with my aunt, you know, my awesome co-host. You know who it is. It's uh, Ron Bow wearing the building, the, the sports guru, man. Don't get it twisted, baby. What's going down, huh? Yeah. Now y'all can hear me. Yeah, now y'all can hear me now. Yeah, now can hear me now. <laughs> Ho hopefully we got all that worked out and all. Yeah. <laughs> and everything is good, so yeah. Yeah, man. But yeah, we uh, we excited, man. Got a very awesome show, man. A lot of cool topics to, to finish out this week, man. This has been so much going on in sports, man. Olympics took a lot of time yesterday, as it should. And it's yeah, gonna take are. a little more time because right now, you know, I put out a poll and we talked about it yesterday about the people. And the oh, people yeah. didn't stop voting. We got up to 149 votes last time I looked. And uh, there's no doubt LeBron James has put this baby to bed, man. 70% of the people have voted in the same poll. It's still up on our YouTube page. And if you haven't had an opportunity, please go and uh, subscribe to our channel, man. It's, uh, you know, you're here right now. Just hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you know when we're coming on for a watch party or whatever it may be. Whatever it may be, but everybody that participated yesterday in our, uh, you know, in our poll, man, definitely appreciate you. But as you can see, LeBron James, yeah, it's, it's a poll. Let me let me read the poll. It says uh, since 2015, who can claim to be the king of the of this era in the NBA? LeBron James or Steph Curry? And I think it's a valid question. As I was saying yesterday, I had a conversation with Deuce. And uh, he was saying, you know, everybody his age and younger, and Deuce is my son. He's 16 years old. Shout out again, Deuce. Uh, he was saying everybody his age and younger, you know, their favorite player is Steph Curry. So it's a valid question. You know, there's various reasons. And, you know, yeah. teams have, I mean, they both have influenced the game greatly. You know, LeBron and Steph. But um, as the people have shown, you know, uh, and the poll will stay up, man. We'll keep this thing running because this is something to talk about all the time, you know. Uh, and I want to see how we can get this vote count up. But uh, we're up to 149 votes, and 70% of the voters have voted for LeBron James. And it's crazy because at 11, 11 o'clock yesterday, Steph Curry was ahead 51% to 49%. I feel like everybody else since then has gone on and, and just voted for LeBron, like nonstop. <laughs> what y'all think about it, man? What y'all think about it? If you see something, say something. If you're in the building, man, say what's up. You know, we love this interactive experience that uh, YouTube provides us, man, when we get to speak to our, um, you know, our, our fans and subscribers and everyone watching. So definitely appreciate y'all tuning in. But hey, let's dive on into the show, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's jump under that uh, yeah. cowboy talk because that's more debatable than who's, who's era it is. Yeah, it'll, yeah. It'll be yeah. LeBron's era until he hang up his shoes. Yeah, man. That's, I mean, hold on. We, that's we, the way it's looking. And he, we, we can't jump straight into the cowboy talk. No, we gotta we gotta pick up where we fell off. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We bro. fell off and we fell off hard. So we're gonna see if somebody hitting a button on the other side trying to censor this conversation right now. But uh yeah, if you didn't know about this, you know, uh there was a three-on-three -three tournament. Uh we're still trying to figure out how anybody even made it to the three-on-three -three tournament from America. Was there a contest? Did anybody hear about a three-on-three -three yeah. contest or were these guys? Who drafted just, these guys? Who, who picked these guys? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I didn't even know it was a three-on-three uh Olympic tournament until I saw it on in the Olympic Games. But I've never it's, heard of it. It's the first time ever. Yeah, because see, just like now, I've already heard of flag football that's supposed to be in there in 2028. 2028 yeah. But I didn't even know that they was gonna have three on three until until the Olympic start was already started. Yeah. So I'm saying who and the team we had was ridiculous. And uh and uh and the team that won the gold medal, Ice Cube, uh yeah. Challenge them to a three on three, and uh, 
they were they uh, the team who was it uh who won it uh, uh the netherlands won it. yeah netherlands. yeah the netherlands won the, the gold medal yeah. in, the, in the olympics man in the three on three and, and, and so the big three ice cube came out and, and put up a challenge he was like okay you know we are the big three right professionally and you know you got the professionals over there playing in the for the nba yeah, and basketball absolutely. right so ice cube was like okay all right, y'all the, the world champions okay we got a big three league over here how about we take the big three all-stars and play, and, and play against you guys, the Netherlands, you know, and, and the Netherlands accepted the challenge, and I would have too if oh, I yeah, were them. Absolutely. You know, whether or not they believe they could beat these guys, and I'm sure they can, because three on three is a different game, but these big three guys been playing the same game. So, yeah, you know, uh, it would have been a great opportunity to see who's the best at the three-man game. But Big Bad Wolf Feeble came out and said, huh? Hey, can't I, do it. Can't do it. Well, you ain't going nowhere if you want to uh, defend your gold medal next time around next here, time. you know, for the most part. Yeah. They basically said they can't play and compete in the Euros. Uh, I guess there's a three-on-three uh, -three Euro league or something like that over there. And um, they they basically told them they couldn't compete in it if uh, if they played the, the, the game against the Ice Cube, the, the Big Three All-Stars. So, yeah. I mean, that was, uh, you know, that was pretty shady. I'm like, man, what's going on? Why y'all hating on Cube first? We hear about the NBA hating on Cube. You know, yeah. going out and telling uh, different sponsors not to sponsor the league, you know, so that they can't raise money and continue to grow. And Cube is not competing with them at all. No, Matter of fact, it's a three on three. Yeah, he's giving them a, a, a platform money because yeah. most of them are, are NBA guys, former NBA guys that people still want to see, yeah. as, as you know, at times. Yeah. Like Allen Iverson went out there and hooped one and, time. And actually, for me, from what I, with the eye test, yeah. just the eye test, from what I saw from the Olympics, uh, three on three play. I'm going to pick the big three. three. I'm going to Absolutely. pick the big three to beat them. Cause from, every day. Because from what I saw, they don't even know uh, really how to play three on three. Like, I'm, I'm going to say like that. Look, how did we get, how did Canyon Barry, the fifth son, the fifth son of the Rick fifth Barry, son of Rick Barry I mean, somehow I got you, an NBA contract, yeah. or a G League contract? I don't know. Didn't huh. shoot 96% granny style. How did but, he get a contract? But this is the thing, and Jay. get invited to the big three. And I sit here, I, I sit here and look you right in your face, and I want to apologize to the Nunes fan because, because Uncle's an old school guy. And he think he know a lot about. It. I sit here and look at Jay face. I said, "Now nah, Rick, Rick Barry got four songs in, yeah. that he done put in the NBA. We yeah. looked it up. He had five, he got five. five. Canyon is actually in the NBA right now. Yeah, and I'd never heard of his name. Hey, you can go back to the episodes well before the Olympics, and we put a uh, what's it called when they like, uh, looking for somebody. Uh, a APB or something? Yeah, yeah, we put an APB out. We on. put one out on uh on, on Canyon Bay. We was like, if anybody knows who this human is, because he's on uh, NBA roster. roster somewhere, you know it. I think he went G League. He yeah, shot yeah. like ninety six point eight percent shooting yeah. granny style. Yeah. So free he's throws, a, free he's throws, granny style free throws. You yeah, know? he shot <laughs> like so, his pop. But I didn't even know Rick Barry had a fifth son. Yeah, you insane. Know? insane. And they talk about nepotism. Yeah, but so anyway. get off Bronny. Uh, the moral of the story. <laughs> yeah, get the moral off Bronny. of the story. You know, I say he got his fifth song that yeah. don't nobody know who he is. Yeah. And don't say nothing about Bryce when he get up to the oh, league yeah. and play with Bronny. You know Please what I'm don't. Moral Please don't. Story. Moral of the story. Happy birthday, Copa. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, big dog. You know. But uh, no, nah, man. So uh, we're going to keep this train rolling. Hopefully the fever backs down and quit acting like a little uh, yellow tail. Ain't that what they call him? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. A, a yellow tail. Yeah, and, we uh, and let these boys play, man. It's yeah, a game, bro. Hey, like, hey, it's a game. Prove you know, who the best. Don't don't be disappointed it's, if they're not the world champion. It's a competition. <laughs> so so what if they're not the what if they get beat by somebody and they're not the world champion, like Noah Lyle said about the Olympic athletes? What happens when the world champion gets beat? Uh, Are they the champions? Is, is that a universe league well, over in the big three? Well, like, we well galaxies, they won, we the, they won the world championship, but they didn't win that game. See, because it's yeah. the whole thing. Some people that won in the Olympics, they they got the diamond league coming up. Some of them go, some of them gonna lose next week. Oh, absolutely. Some of them gonna lose next week. Are they gonna run? Yeah, well, yeah, because they, yeah. they gotta yeah. make a check because they ain't getting nothing out the Olympics. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to keep this thing moving on. You know, got a little bit of boxing to talk about. Like I told you, he's trying to jump a gun on me a little bit. Oh, okay. I, I, I just it's, all, it's all good, though. You know, but uh, this past weekend, if y'all had an opportunity uh, to to watch, uh, Virgil Ortiz took on um, Bohachuk. I, you know, again, I don't like to butcher names. But, but it is um, what it is. 
you know, a lot of people are, are, are kind of confused about the, the result, but you know, I wasn't confused. You know, when I saw Virgil Ortiz come in the ring and he had Golden Boy Productions behind him, you know, sponsoring oh, yeah. him, and people uh -huh. have been talking about Virgil Ortiz and Terrence Crawford fight. Immediately I knew that if uh, Boy Chuck didn't knock him out, Virgil was gonna get that win. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was two questionable, questionable knockdowns, you know? Uh, one of them, Virgil was going in with a, a big left hook and he got caught on the chin and went this way and it turned into a wild hook and he ended up both mitts on the floor, right? But he popped right back up and was like, that wasn't a knockdown, that wasn't a knockdown. That was later in the fight. That was the second one. And the first one was in the first round. It looked like a slip as well. You know, they both look like slips, yeah. but they're both knockdowns. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you look at the stat sheet, he's got two knockdowns and a victory. You know, and, and Boa Chuck, I mean, basically every number in the book besides power shots, Boa Chuck led, you know? Yeah, what's uh, the, these fights now are so difficult, man. They really are. It ain't difficult if you know who the money's behind. Yeah, 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 If, yeah. if you can look Absolutely. back to the paper trail, yeah, and if yeah. it's not a knockout, convincingly, yeah. a, a convincing knockout, you can go Pretty ahead and decide who's going to win really. that match. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, because they're yeah. all about the money, man. Who gonna put, who's the name that can put the booties in the, the seats? seats. That's what it's about. That's what it's all yeah. about. Period. That's why, he, that's why uh, Ohe Atani got a $700 million contract. But $600 million, whatever it was, he can put butts in the seats. You know? But same thing here in boxing. But in boxing, it's real bad because oftentimes, guys that don't have a loss end up taking losses just because nobody knows who they are. It's yeah, a popularity yeah, contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And that's what's frustrating to uh, me as a boxing fan. Oh, absolutely. So when I sit down, I want it to be a fair contest. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times <laughs> you sit down and you look and you be like, oh, what's going on? My boy Copa say Ben Simmons is the GOAT. Oh, yeah, he is. The greatest, greatest, uh, what of all time, actually? Like, GOAT? Are you talking about just a, a GOAT, period? Yeah. A goat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not the greatest of all time. I mean, like he's, he's a literal he's, goat. Yeah, he's a he's a goat because he's out grazing. Out he grazing. Ain't, play, ain't, ain't playing play basketball. Hey, but he sure and, does make them great what? summer he, summer he, videos. He is the goat at not playing. He is the he's the YMCA goat. <laughs> yeah. He is the twenty four hour fitness goat. You know what I'm saying? Like the dudes that that come into the gym, Ben Simmons in there balling, waiting for the uh, Ben Simmons show up to the twenty four hour the Planet Fitness gym. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? With all Get the shit. out. Yeah, with all the show up. Yeah. Like you say, and a bag. Yeah. Show up to the NBA in a suit. Yeah, somebody, <laughs> somebody right there said Ortiz. Uh, Ortiz is going to be hard work, man. I don't know about that, man. I don't know. I've, I've seen Ortiz fight. I saw him fight. We're from Dallas, Texas. Big uh, Virgil Ortiz, man. Shout out Virgil Ortiz. Grand Prairie, Texas, by the way. Oh, yeah. I don't want to sound like I'm hating on him, but I didn't know. I couldn't tell if he wanted to fight. He landed several big shots. Bolchuk took them very well every time. You know, I watched the fight. It was a really good fight, but uh, I, I just feel like Bolchuk was busier. You know, uh, if anything, I thought it was going to be a draw because, you know, Bolchuk did have uh, two two knockdowns. So, yeah, yeah. So they go. You yeah. know, and like you say, the more popular fighter, the one that uh, can put the button in the seats, that's who's going to win the fight. That's who's going to win the fight, that. man. Follow yeah. the money bag, man. Yeah. Follow the money bag. Yeah, he does have size on him, but you know. Uh, and I think he, I think Virgil Ortiz beat him in amateurs, if I, if I'm not mistaken. So, hey, can you look that up for me real quick? And, and shout out to you, uh, Numo Thorax. I think I got that right, bro. You know, great yeah. name. That's pretty hey. dope. That's pretty dope, bro. Yeah, man. But appreciate y'all tuning in, man. If y'all don't know, this is Nooney Sports and Tech, man. I'm J.A. This is my uncle right here, Ronald yes. Bowler. He's yes, really sir. my uncle. That's why I call yeah. him uncle. We ain't yeah. biting off nothing. We've been around for a minute, too. Not, not that sound is awesome. My mama is his sister. You yes, know what I'm saying? His yes, big sir. sister. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. That was a crazy house. I'm telling you that right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's some thick skin. Thick skin yeah. around that <laughs> junk, baby. Yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of smart people in there. Absolutely, that's a fact. That is no lie. That's no lie. Yeah. But yeah, man. But you know, uh, we also did a poll on this. Matter of fact, let's see what this poll. Let's see what that poll looked like on this fight right here. Oh, oh yeah, I don't know. Uh, so we asked the people, you know, who do you feel won the fight? And I, I did this poll, you know, this was several days ago. It's still up, man. But we had seventy-three votes come in. Fifty-eight percent of the people felt that Boa Chuck won this fight. You know, so 
you know, it's a lot of people that lost money on that fight. Uh, this is Bolchuk was a Ukrainian guy. Yeah. Great energy, you know, and, and, and with that Ukrainian that situation, you're talking about these dudes coming out, going to war, and then coming yeah. back in the ring, you know? So yeah, that's the easy work. It's a different right type there. of grit going yeah, on in that yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Different mindset. Yeah, a yeah. different psyche coming at you right oh, now. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So that's why it's very telling that Vasily Lomachenko was like, nah, I ain't fighting Giovanni Davis. He's <laughs> 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 like, I, I am not fighting Giovanni Davis. No, not right hey, now. Hey, man, I seen a clip of a giant, yeah. uh, of uh, Tank when he was six years old. Trip the Ghost, appreciate it. You saw Tank when he, uh... When he was six years old, man, he hit a little boy, little boy told his hands off and walked away. Yeah. Said, it's on he YouTube. He like the old girl that uh, Imani Khalif hit <laughs> in the Olympics. Yeah. yeah. She just <laughs> shut it down. Took yeah. Hey, hey, man. And, uh, and gave her the thing and put it, you know, like, that's, that's crazy, man. But, um, so Trip the Ghost says, uh, where y'all from? Like the vibes, man, we Dallas, Texas, man. That yeah. was Oak Cliff, Texas, baby, yeah, born and yeah, raised. Yes, man. East well, Dallas, Texas. You were born in Oak yeah, Cliff, Cliff. I was. A, I'm from East Dino, East hey, Side. What you tell? What you tell the President Carter? We tell <laughs> the President Dallas, Carter Texas. story real quick. East Dallas, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> One time when I was in the Air Force, so this is gonna go date me a little bit. I was. Uh, I had to meet the president because he came to the uh, base I was at, and they got uh, and, he, and he actually came to tour the facility that I worked at because it was an electronic facility. And then he wanted to check all that out because that was a new, high new tech, tech stuff. Yeah. yeah, back then. So we had to get all dressed up and we were uh, standing out there. And uh, when the president came, they say, say, shake the president's hand and tell him where you're from. So one dude said, my name is uh, Alvin Penny. I'm from New York City. Another dude, Alvin Jackson. I'm from Los Angeles. I said, I'm a boy where I'm from East Dallas, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then when Jimmy Carter <laughs> got on down from... About a couple of people from me, you know, he always got somebody next to him. He had, he turned to the person and said, he's, uh, he's Dallas, like he's St. Louis, he's Dallas City. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And then my commander asked me that. After 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 the president left, he said, he's Dallas. I said, no, man, it's just a part of town. Yeah, I'm you from, gotta know man. if you're from you Dallas, gotta, man, yeah, you know, you East rep. Dallas, you know, yeah. South Dallas, you know, West Dallas, East you know, Dallas, Oak Cliff, you know, Dallas, you, know? you know, North Dallas, <laughs> you know? Yeah, we gotta it, let it, you know what part. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, uh, Unc was very specific. Yeah, when I'm he from East Dallas, Texas. Mr. President <laughs> Jimmy Carter around here. Made, <laughs> made Jimmy Carter ask about his own country. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, nah, appreciate you, man. Appreciate the subscription, Trip to Ghost. Yo, yeah, shout out Lubbock, Texas, man. Texas Tech oh. Red Raiders, shout out also oh, UT. Man. Uh, yeah, uh, was that, was that what Trip the Ghost from? You from you from Lubbock? No, nah, he's from Austin. He's in Lubbock right now. Oh, I've been to both oh, of those hey. spots, man. I love Austin and Lubbock. Yeah, yeah I do too, yeah, man. Yeah. Austin a little more live than Lubbock, but, yeah, you, know, but you know, Lubbock yeah. boys got that bread. That's what that old money had up there. Oh, yeah, you know? man, I got a, I got a few homeboys uh, that went to uh, Texas Tech. Yeah, I yeah, got yeah. homies up there right now, oh, man. Absolutely. One of them owns a dope digital studio up there, and it's oh, yeah. like world renowned at this point. Uh, pretty dope, man. Uh, J and J, best, uh, best you. Let's do yes. I'm play with boys, man. What you talking about, man? I don't know what you're talking about, dog. I don't you know, know what you're talking about. about. I don't know what you're but, talking uh, about. But yeah, man, uh, it was a great fight this past weekend. Had a, had a good time, man. If y'all go hey, back and check out this, that, that run back, that is, was uh, up for the fight of the uh, year right who there. Who is that, JR? Uh, J.A. Uh, J and J. J, J, J. Nah, Let me tell you what I think about it. See, I don't, I don't play with boys. I don't play. See, uh, don't play no game. Unk laugh and joke, but Unk don't play. Uh, not a now. Unk laugh and joke, but Unk don't play. Yeah, man. So <laughs> let's talk about this. Let's talk about this Tyreek and this uh and, and, and this Noah before we get to them boys. Oh, man. wow. That's so, just that's just nonsense. So if, if you don't know, Tyreek Hill was getting interviewed, and uh, some of what he said comes out to be true, seemingly that, that he was faking the <laughs> the COVID. Uh, Cause like you say, you ain't never seen nobody sick on a nine. Uh, Nineteen seven. No, you know? I, I, I haven't ever seen. That's a pretty quick time to be sick. You <laughs> yeah, know, that's the real. I don't know how many nineteen sevens know what ran yeah. this year. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. But uh, but you know, it, it, it's funny because Tyreek was like, man, Noah lies. He out there faking, man. I beat Noah right now. I beat him racing right now. And now it started this whole debate about football players and track runs. And I got one thing to say, bro. Uh, Tyreek, you can beat him in a 40. No. That, he can't no. beat him in a 40? No. No. No 40? No. Tyreek can't beat, he can't beat Noah Lyle in nothing, man. I'm just <laughs> football. <laughs> is, he, is, no. he, is he delusional no. with that or what? He's delusional. He can't, you know, see this, is, see, this is the thing about football. Tyreek be stopping and starting. Yeah. He's quick. Andrew Hunter, 
Tyreek just ran six six seventy eight oh, in, in the in the sixty. That's not good. And you lost to Michael Parsons. That's so go good. talk about something else. Noah Law ran a six forty one, and yeah. he already he already four steps ahead of you at sixty meters, and your speed is decreasing, and his is maintaining greatly. And and by the time you get to hundred meters, he will beat Tyreek Hill from ten to fifteen meters. It looked like and it looked like he was accelerating at a hundred. When he he was, and everybody was decelerating. Yeah, at yeah, that point. that's a. But that, he was maintaining his yeah, speed, like yeah, absolutely. Crazy. Whenever you see a guy like that's that crazy. come from behind, he's not. It looks like he's accelerating, but he's actually not. He's just maintaining his speed. Way hey, uh, better than Hill, right? yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, shout out, uh, Oak Cliff L- 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 J- Lodge Tastic Boyish. Hey, Cedar Hill, right here, baby. Oh you yeah. You know, class two thousand. I actually graduated from Grace Prep, but I went to Cedar Hill growing all the way up. After we moved from Oak Cliff, you know, Oak Cliff to Cedar Hill. My mama's still living at 75104. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So shout out Cedar Hill. Appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Anybody else watching right now, hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, man. We come on every Wednesday around noon. We had an outage yesterday, so but we're so committed we to, to the finish. people. So yeah. we're coming to finish the show. Absolutely. It means yeah. Tools, you yeah. know what I'm yeah. saying? So we back on the day, man. Got to finish these topics up that we uh, you know, we conquered out the set yesterday and, and complete yesterday. But oh, absolutely, uh, yeah, man. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Appreciate the love, man. Hey, we also got memberships, got merch, man. Just check us out, man. If you're not familiar with us, go back and look at some of the old shows, man. We got interviews with DMC. The DOC is my big bro. I'm always we're going to see him later today, as a matter of fact. But got interviews with Doc. Got interviews with Vince Young, Royal Williams. Roy Holiday, got Vince, Matt got, Kemp, got, uh, Matt Kemp. You know, yeah. shout out Matt Kemp, man. Just retired this week as an LA Dodger man. Shout out, that's huge. You know, if y'all don't know, uh, when we interviewed him, he was dang, he hadn't played in a minute, Deucey. and he was still number fifteen in home runs in the league. So he's still top twenty in home runs of current players right now, and he just retired. Is what I'm saying. So shout out Matt Kemp. All the love. Mike Ducey been on the show. Sam Gannon been on the show, man. Oh, yeah. So we 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 got some great, great shows, man. Mark Clayton, you know, is, is a constant on the show, man. You know, so, you know, go back, check out the show, man. We have a lot of fun over here. Fat Pimp been on the show. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? We had all, we've had all kinds of interviews, you know, just wasn't really marketing, just collecting content, getting great content, man. And uh, appreciate y'all tuning in, like I said. But, uh. Tyreek and Noah, so you ain't gonna get that. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, Tyreek, 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 Tyreek can't be no Noah in no forty yards. He can't be. He can't. Anybody was well, at the Olympics. My boy say Tyreek ran track in college and I was know a high that. school t- state champ. Yeah, I know that. Hey, I was high school state champ as well, bro. I, I, I know that. I ain't no uh, professional track guy. You I, know, this, I, this I you know, learning about me. I, I know how <laughs> Tyreek ran, ran ran track in college, but how long ago was that? Yeah. Uh oh, our camera moved for some reason. Oh snap! Hey, oh lord! It had, hey, it had moved in forever. It's, but anyway, yeah, this no, I, I, I know Tyreek ran ran track in high school and college. But this is what I want you to understand. That's a it's a long way from uh nine seven what Noah Lau ran and what uh, Tyreek Hill ran in college. I think Tyreek Hill did run a ten one, but that's a long way and that's a long time ago. Well, and I will say this: if Tyreek ran a ten one on. I don't know. I mean, it's possible. No. A guy that runs a 10-1, that, well, that saying, ran a 10-1, seven, eight years, no, I don't, I don't it's know not if he's possible. Faster now than he he's he's not faster now well, than he was. He's not then. faster than because, no chance, because this is, Because this then. is how I know he's not faster. While he's practicing football, Noah Lyle is practicing track. Running, yeah. So so now, how can how can he be faster than Noah Lyle? He's doing this all day while you're doing something else. Yeah, That's what I tell a guy. I do think. not go challenge somebody that do something for a living when you do something else for a living. Yeah, if you both do the same thing, now those guys in the in the hundred meter finals, they can say, "Oh, if I catch Tyree uh, Noah tomorrow, I might can beat him." Yeah. But if you were not in the hundred meter finals, you have no chance of beating Noah Lyle. Yeah. Because yeah. you had all those opportunities, and I know Tyree. I know about track and field. Yeah. That's my sport. Yeah. I know Tyreek. And that's and Ty- right there. Tyreek has not ran nearly the times. Tyreek, right now, I'm not sure he can beat DK Metcalf. Yeah. It'll be hard for Tyreek to run faster than 1032 right now. Yeah. I that's mean, not easy to do. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's some guys, it's a few other guys that can go in that league too. Yeah, absolutely. You know? so, absolutely yeah. not. But, you know, he is a cheater, but picking up, putting them down in a box he, real he's quick. A, in he's a football cheater. Tyreek, yeah, he's a, he's a football he cheater. You, but I don't know about he's a track and field dog. donkey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about donkey now. 10-3 is a donkey on the world class level. 9 9 2 got last place. 9 9 2 got dead last, man. In the Come Olympics, on. you know, that, that might have been the fastest the, Olympics ever. The guy that Perfect. got dead last, can, the guy he that got dead last. Like, bl- ah, yeah. Ob- like ob- ah. ob- oblique Seville. And ran a 9 9 2. Oblique Seville. Across the line, like, not even not even trying to finish. From Jamaica. <laughs> well, he, he didn't try to finish. We were going so fast. Yeah. He still. He still Took his momentum, took him to that a boy, 992. Was mad Come at on, a man. 992. No, but I, no. you know, when you're in last place running because, a 992, that's because crazy. this is what I gotta, this is what I gotta let everybody know. You know, when uh Tyreek Hill was in college, yeah, he did not run the Olympic qualifying standard time. Yeah. 10.08. That's what you have to win, do to go to the Olympic trials. Yeah. He did not run the He was in college doing some of the Olympic and world yeah, championships. He didn't qualify. He didn't qualify. 10-1 so, is not 10.08. Yeah, yeah. So how can That's he two times. So how can he qualify now when he didn't qualify then? Man. Oh, like I said, he might have got when I got older, but I ain't take no football here, so I was playing baseball now. I did get fashion. You know? I'm just saying me. You are an anomaly. Yeah. Because this is <laughs> no, no, I'm just telling you the truth. Because yeah. this is what I t- challenge anybody to do. Go find, go look at all of the high school yeah. phenomenons and go oh, yeah. and go find me all the guys in high school that got all the high school records. Go well, find me, take, go it, find me those know, same guys that's got gold medals. You gotta have talent and a work ethic. And most yeah, people with and talent the, rely on their talent. Yeah, but but this is the this is the thing. Most people Run their fastest time in their life before they're 18 years old. That's crazy. And this uh, and, and this young guy, Quincy Wilson, yeah. everybody's talking like yeah, he'll be That's, like yeah. he'll be back in the Olympics again. Not necessarily. I mean, because even in the Olympics, he ran a 47 for the first time this year. Yeah. And it's because he's run himself to death this year. Yeah, and then not only that, he's under 18, and four years from now he'll be over 18. Yeah. Because this is the this is a he broke the he broke the 18 and under mm-hmm. record when he ran 44-6. The, the 18 and That's under crazy. record high school. Like a child, no, too. There was another high school. It's been two other high school boys run 44. Yeah. They ran him in high school. Neither one of them went to the Olympics. Damn, but the boy. thing about him, he ran his, and they took him to the Olympics. And it's a good thing they did because his chances to going back to the Olympics again yeah. is slim to none. Well, I mean... It's the networking involved now, and I think the arms around him, the people in the organization, you don't think they're going to help him at all? Whatsoever? You can get all that. Because that is a lot of... You, you know, can get all the... That's, that's a whole different program. That's, okay. that's LeBron James early on. Okay. LeBron James was thrusted into the forefront early on. So, And he wasn't really thrusted. He earned it by, I'm finna, by running that 40 I'm going to give you a perfect example. You know, Arian Knight. Yeah. He got fourth, right? Yeah. When he was 17, what did he got? He got third when he was 17. Yeah. He 20, he 21. Now he got four. Yeah. He getting slower instead of faster. Man. But he, 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 ran, he ran his fastest time before he was 18 wow, years old. That's crazy. That I've been insane. I've been I have been doing this stuff since the 60s. Yeah. And I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because all these high school phenomena, none of them have a gold medal. Well, man, I'm hoping that Quincy Wilson, man, I'm because he looked like his body hadn't even matured yet. And he out there running that 44. Yeah, I mean, yeah. with, with that maturity but the, comes But there's weight. no guarantee. It comes other variables that we, yeah. yeah. Ain't, like, there ain't no guarantee. Yeah, there ain't no guarantee. And his running style can improve because he's still out there. Oh, yeah, he's running still running. Like, he, he run like he's 16. Yeah, he, he got really, his dogs like running against himself. And really not, you know, run like, like he's 12. I yeah, mean, not, man, yeah. not being funny. Yeah. He run yeah, like. Yeah, but no, nah, that's a uh, shout out Quincy Wilson. But man, but let's move to this football, man. Here we go. Here we go. This Cowboys talk. What's going down? Uh oh, Unc, Unc stepped out for a second. You know what I'm saying? But, um, good. Yeah. Oh, okay, right on, right on. But yeah, we gonna go on the top, jump into these Dallas Cowboys, man. You know, I don't know if this is perfect time. She's gonna have to jump out in a minute. Oh no, 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 no! I got a while. I got a. It's, it's got a lot it. to talk about. That's why we didn't say no specific thing. But shout out to the newest Dallas Cowboys on the team. Mr. Jordan Phillips and Mr. Carl Lawson. You know, I'm looking uh, looking to have y'all come down here and, uh, and make some impact immediately. And I love the big bodies. Oh, yeah, to try to stop that run yeah. up the middle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, that's uh, 
uh, our new defensive coordinator. Our, yeah. Our old, our new old defensive coordinator. Yeah, Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer back in the building, putting his thumbprint on that thing, and you best believe Jimmy Johnson still in the building too. Oh yeah, they they got something to do with that, and I'm gonna say this. He got something to do with Dak. What you think? To do with CD too. Oh, well, Jerry, I mean, Jerry ain't giving that money out I like that. I said Jimmy though. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about Jerry, Jimmy, and Mike McCarthy. It's something going on in the Cowboy locker room yeah. that we don't know. Because oh, I know, I know what it is. Shador. Oh, okay. I know what it is. You hey, know what? Hey, keep talking. Yeah, you remember that one? Ha- all right, if look, look, you can go, you can go. Yeah, keep talking. Do. Let me I, I, let I me go do this right quick, and I'll follow. Back in time. I got a lot to trip. I got back in the day, hey, let me tell you about this real quick. So back in the gap, you know, Jimmy Johnson became the head coach. Everybody was like, what is going on? We start out first year, one in 15, ugly. Uh, Troy Aikman, the quarterback. It ain't looking good at all. Then we get him a little help in the building. And of course, this is way before they put a salary cap on football right on, on, on rosters and things like that so jerry was out there slanging you know he was getting to whoever he wanted paying for what he needed to but in the draft jimmy johnson what they did they traded herschel walker got a ton of picks for herschel walker from minnesota right with all these picks jimmy johnson was able to go and get you know seth russell maryland uh nate newtons and you know, a, a ton of guys to come in here and do jobs, you know, and, and build out a team. And it was ugly at first, you know, but that second year was a little better. You know, we got eight wins, I believe. And in that third year, you know, we came in and, you know, went to the playoffs, I believe. And then I believe it's like that fourth year when Jimmy was, uh, it was, uh, it was a 92 when we won our first, well, we won uh, 92, 93, or was it 93, 90, No, it was 92, 93, 95, I believe, or the, or the Super Bowls that we won. Let me make sure of that, man. That's why it's good to have a little a little computer up. Man, I can fact check myself on the spot, you know? But if anybody in here uh, knows uh, the, the years of the Cowboys championships off top of the head, please let me know, man. You know, get on me about Michael Jordan all the time because he say, you like him because you was little. I was grown, and Michael Jordan ain't the GOAT. <laughs> it's a trip. But let me check this out real quick. Uh, Dallas Cowboys Super Bowls. Yeah, we looking what? Yeah, 92, 93, 95. Yeah, I was right. I was right. So we won Super Bowl 92, 93, 95. Jimmy Johnson here in his fourth year here took us to the Super Bowl, right? We went 1 to 15, had an eight win season, went to the playoffs the next year, then won the Super Bowl the next year. Ain't that right. the order of events? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he came in 89. You know, Jimmy, Jimmy don't mind taking a step back to launch yourself forward. Now the question is, does Mike McCarthy mind? Does Mike McCarthy have that kind of timeline with the Cowboys? Cause you know, I keep hearing rumbles of Bill Belichick, and I tell you the truth, I don't want Bill Belichick. No. I'd rather Mike McCarthy than Bill Bel- Bill Bel- than Bill Belichick. I think I think Mike beat him in the in the Super Bowl once, didn't he? Did Green Bay beat uh No, they beat huh. somebody else. Yeah, they anyway. beat somebody else. But anyway. anyway Ah, uh, uh, Bill, Bill Belichick, you know, these old guys, I mean, <laughs> this is a new, new era, new yeah. generation of players. Yep. You need somebody with a fresh mind, yep. open to the players and understand these players and all that. And I'm going to say this, I don't know what's going on, Yeah. but the Cowboys is, uh, don't seem to be in no hurry to sign nobody right now. I mean, no, because I'm telling you why. You know, like Jerry said, Dak's whole career, he has spent money, spent money, spent money, spent money, spent money. Got him everybody around him that he needs to be successful. Hasn't done it. Gave him the big check. Okay, since you got the big check, you got the big responsibility. Let me see you go do something with the guys you got. You got a good enough team around you right now to do something. You know, I think they're building this defense up. And I think that first sign of that was when they brought Mike Zimmer up here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, so I think they're focusing on that defense and, you know, Again, isn't that the way that Jimmy Johnson built the Cowboys? Oh, yeah. yeah. And he, he built it from the inside out. Oh, yeah. Dion and, uh, was the last piece, right? Dion Sanders on that on that 95 ship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? But before that, Charles Haley was here. Yeah. 
They you know, got him from San Francisco. Yeah, got him from San Francisco. You know, they had Russell Mellon. They built that defense out now, our O-line. Like I said, they built it inside out. Jimmy built the, the O-line inside out. You know, then he got Troy and Emmett after the O-line was, he had Nate, uh, Tony, yeah, Mark, yeah. Stemowski. Well, you know, uh, well, wait, 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 you know, Nate and Mark, two and they was here when he came. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they was here from the uh to, from uh laundry years. Yeah, and yeah. Nate, Nate Newton and Mark Two and But he got rid there. of some other guys that didn't fit the mold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, they didn't fit the, fit the plan. Yeah, no, no, they didn't fit the plan. You know, so I feel like Jimmy has his hand all over the rebuild, the reconstruction of this thing. But Jerry has always been so to sign. Like his saying is, uh, time timelines make deals. Timelines make deals. Oh, Jerry, Jerry. You know, like he for- anything else, he, he's in no rush. Jerry What's kind of style. I mean, with Jerry have been, it's just been a very few players that Jerry gave that money to right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. Very few. Very few. He didn't even get, he didn't even get. Emmett Emmett didn't get the money. money Emmett had a two year. uh, Michael uh, Irvin didn't get the money either. Emmett sat out for two games. Yeah. And and they was like, oh, no. And then we went on a run. As soon as Emmett came back, no pun intended, we went on a run. Oh, absolutely. You know? So, you know, and then this whole thing, uh, you know, I, I, I listen, that's a lot of hearsay and naysayers and all kind of sayers, but uh, somebody have, uh, put out that uh, Dallas is uh, it's a little uh, under the table between uh, San Diego and uh, Dallas rumblings about C.D. Lamb. Yeah. I mean, it's all kinds of stuff about C.D. I mean, you know, Lamb, man. People quite like naturally, when you're in the contract, you're all kind of stuff going to gonna come out but jerry ain't in no hurry to sign no CD. but but he you know he went back and you know he said cd means a lot to this team oh, you know he went yeah. he didn't retract his words saying he wasn't in a rush but if jerry jones says he's in a rush to sign cd and acts like he's all t- like he's losing let oh, he yeah. uh, jerry jones understands negotiations right they want to get cd for the lowest dollar they can cd want to get the biggest check he can uh-huh. they're gonna meet in the middle but see, he's still gonna be the highest paid receiver at the end of this thing, you know, or right yeah. there with Justin Jefferson. He might yeah. get a dollar more than Justin Jefferson, and I've seen him do it before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. One dollar. I've seen him too. I, I, I seen him do it, do it too. And you know, and now, I, I, I don't know. Athletes. My boy you know, Trip to Go say it's prime, and the kids coming to the star. I don't know about prime just yet. He's still nah, he's still getting nah, primed. No, nah, no, nah, prime know? ain't coming. Not, not yet, anyway. Prime ain't coming. Yeah, now there's no head coach. Yeah, I, I think I think Prime is where he needs to be. I think he's a great mentor. If anything, I can see yeah. Prime at SMU. I can see SMU cashing out for Prime yeah. and SMU growing that organization because with NIL and time, bringing back uh, Eric Dickerson yeah. and, and Craig James. Shout out Craig yeah. James. We'll yeah, have him on know, at some point. Prime, Prime's uh, mentality and attitude, you can't coach grown men with that. Exactly. You know, exactly. you... Grown prime, man made me like, man, shut prime up, bro. Is, yeah, I prime heard that is, yesterday, dog. Prime, but prime is more motivational and, and, you know, he give you aspirations and yeah. motivations and all kind of visions yeah. and all that. Innovations. But, yeah, but, but, you know, but grown men, they pass that. Yeah. We need to know our assignment. Yep. How to do it best. Yeah. You know, all, all this stuff. We don't, we don't need don't all, all that slick talk. Don't need yeah, all we don't them need words. All, we you, don't need all that slick you talk. You come with a bunch of words to a grown man, he gonna look at you sideways. Yeah, like, like, I think he's trying to get over on me on something. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, yeah, he, nah, he's trying to talk, nah, trying to nah, talk quick to me. Prime ain't, Prime ain't. I don't think Prime will be here, but I'd love to see Shador here, man. Uh, Shador, uh, you know, uh, better arm, better a- the accuracy and the ball out on time thing. Well, that's something that Shador doesn't do well either, if you want me to be quite honest. Like, getting that ball out on time. Yeah. So I don't want to see that again. I truly want to see, because what I do like about Trey Lance, even though his balls have been inaccurate at times, he gets the ball out. And when he doesn't, he has athleticism to move. That's all I'm saying. What he didn't do in the other game, in the game the other day, was have a three and out. Not one of them. And I think that is very, that's a very good thing. Because anytime you can let our defense breathe and have a, a second to gather themselves, and not be on the field every five minutes. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's yeah, a good thing. Yeah. And a lot of people and forget about how the three and outs affect yeah. our defense. Yeah, absolutely. And then by the end of the game, they're dead tired getting burned, and it's not because they suck. It's because well, they're you know, sucking I wins. I said it to you the other day about time possession. Well, yeah, what was that? Dallas had more time possession than the Ravens. And I asked you, what's the first half time possession, though? 
doesn't matter. Get it does matter. In the second that half. matters. It always matters when it's guys you don't well, like. No, nah, well, I got. No, nah, I'm just matters. saying. The, <laughs> so first half, sec, uh, time of possession for the Cowboys. Uh, I believe I got that stat. I got it. I got notes. Yeah. I got. Yeah, I got, yeah, I got yeah, some got notes because we're gonna do a DAC breakdown yeah, in a few yeah, weeks. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. Like, like just before this thing starts yeah. or whatever. Like, uh, or when he starts sucking, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna bring it all the way out. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to hold back and give the guy a chance because he looks good in practice. Oh, it looked good in the regular season in practice, like some other players. Regular that we season know. against the teams, it's like practice squad, like not against the good teams. And I got all the numbers to back up what I'm talking about. These are the stats the Cowboys should these, be looking at. All these guys are in the, the NFL. That they do all, look at. All teams are good. You're in the NFL. No, Most that's false. Of it, most of the time, Jonathan, between it's not 10, 10 or twelve percent between the first team and the bottom team. You saying it's every, not that much. You saying every every dude in the NFL is a neck up guy? Is that no, what I'm hearing? No. Okay, no. so it ain't that many neck up dudes, but no. the good teams got majority of the neck up guys. Yeah, all of them some, got athletes, and then, and, then, and then some of them, some of them got neck down guys. Yeah, I mean because but all of them got athletes. This is the whole thing. Get knocked on your butt. It got nothing to do with being neck up. Yeah, absolutely not. They all okay. athletes is yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, that, 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 all of them no, are No, that's what I'm saying. All of them got really saying, good athletes, yeah. but we know yeah. the difference between the good and great is that neck up, and it's a, it's a, that's a wide gap. Yeah, it's, it's a wide gap. That's a wide gap. And, 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 and the way it's looking, uh, you got a more uh, neck down guys than you got neck up. So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, because when you talk about quarterbacks, quarterbacking, and when you start talking about turnovers, and, and detrimental play in the playoffs, yeah. you only got about one or two neck up guys. Yeah, all the no rest doubt. of them, all everybody in uh, the NFL has, has got Josh Allen has got a losing record in the playoffs. Yeah, he ain't he ain't always neck up. It's the neck up guys. Yeah. So there's neck yeah. up guys and there's neck up guys in pressure situations. And yeah, that's so where the number gets even smaller. It's only two or three. That's uh, where the number gets even smaller. Patrick man. Mahomes got a winning record in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh uh, 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 Joe Burrow got a winning record in the playoffs. Uh, Aaron Rodgers got a winning record in the playoffs. Yeah. Do you know that Matthew Stafford don't even have a winning record in the playoffs? Because oh. all his all his lo- all, all all his wins came with the Rams. Yeah. And it had nothing to do with him. It had more to do with the defense. Yeah. Because yeah. Aaron Dalton was the MVP. Yeah. I mean, he threw some I mean, dimes so, too now. So I'm just saying, yeah. So he all threw some these dimes guys, to Cooper Cup and the uh, yeah. and the and the, and the uh, OJ uh, o- Odell Beckham yeah. before yeah. he hurt his knee. And, and and this is me. When they first and, uh, traded Jerry Goff, Anderson, I think his name was. When they first je- traded Jerry Goff for Matthew Stafford, I said I would have never did it. Everybody said, "Well, you crazy." Man, yeah. now who looked like they the better quarterback? I mean, looked but, like Jerry Goff. But only one of them teams got a Super Bowl though, and Jerry Goff didn't do it when, yeah, he, hey. when he had his chance. Hey, but this whole thing, Aaron Donald didn't get MVP the year he and, played. And you also Aaron got, Donald didn't, didn't get MVP with Jerry Goff. For sure, he got MVP. Was it? If he'd have played the MVP, Jerry Goff probably would have got the. Game. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but but you see, uh, the the one thing is, uh, you got to look at also at what the Rams were trying to do, right? Yeah. They're new. They're still fairly new to LA. They still trying to build a fan base. So they had to do what they had to do to win a Super Bowl. They couldn't yeah. just get there. Oh, yeah. Because people ain't absolutely. loyal enough to stick absolutely. with them just for getting yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. So they got and Matt at his, probably his last year of his prime. And I'm going to say it like just this. Just before he hit his decline. He, they got Matt Stafford at his peak of his career. Matthew Stafford wasn't even the difference in them winning. It was the defense. No doubt about it. But yeah. they had the same defense the year before. Aaron Donald was there the year before. Yeah, but now Jalen Ramsey but might not have been he, there the Yeah, Jalen Ramsey wasn't there. And then Aaron Donald. Go look at his stats the year before and look at the stats he got MVP. The year he got, the year he got MVP, he got two sacks. He didn't get no sacks the year before. And, and people if he see, got two sacks that game and three tackles behind the line of scrimmage, they probably would have won. I, I, I'm just saying. And it, was, it, was really, it was really that running game that did it too yeah, for the offense. Yeah, Akers it was a, and uh, it that was bowling Matthew, ball. I forget who that know, bowling ball dude was. It, it wasn't Matthew Stafford. That dude was I mean, he was a quarterback, was but it wasn't like he came in and made a great difference. You already in the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, new Motorax, new Motorax say, how you gonna have a team full of black players and no black coaches? They do have some black coaches on the squad, man. Who is that? Uh, a DB coach, boy from Green Bay, uh, Al Harris. Oh, well, that's yeah. uh, that's every team in the league. Yeah, absolutely. That's every everybody. Team that, hey, that's every, well, besides Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh got it. Well, I mean, but but his staff is not and, like and his ba- And Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, they had a, uh, Baltimore had an all-black quarterback room last year. Yeah. You know, because I think Byron Leffridge was a head coach or something like that, or the, the quarterback, quarterback coach. coach. Uh, it was so, I don't yeah. know who it was. Yeah. It was somebody. But, and then they had, you know, Lamar and Tyler yeah. Huntley and uh, and Jackson. It's there right but now. But what the rest of the coach staff look like? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I, there, don't I, don't, I don't think it's one team in the league 
Yeah. He's got a predominantly black coaching staff. Yeah, I don't so know. So that ain't, I mean, well, we ain't even Pittsburgh, all Pittsburgh, maybe. Yeah. Pittsburgh, maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, maybe. I don't maybe know. Maybe not. But anyway. But that don't, that don't hey, necessarily they have that mean all the time. W's, you know what I'm saying? I think, yeah. I think if you can get a, a mix of just every... If you can get the best guys, it's about the best minds. Yeah, you know, yeah it's about, about the skin the, tone. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, it's about the best minds. You, you accumulate the best minds in the room to put together a scheme that can work. That's what it's all about, man. They ain't about no colors, man. Yeah, and then, yeah that's uh, it. Because I've seen dummies in every shade, shape, and form. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've seen absolute dummies, slap, <laughs> dummies, slap dummies. big idiots. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, dummies don't have no filter. They they go <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> oh no, they they you know. They'll, they'll fool you more than anything now. Yeah, but it's a it's a lot of stuff going on around the Cowboys. And uh, and this is what I keep drilling home to the Cowboy fans. Yeah. Jerry Jones has accomplished the one thing that he wanted more. Wait, well, he got three Super Bowls. But the one thing that he wanted more than anything was that the Dallas Cowboys be the most expensive franchise in sports today and that's what they are and the that's his most ever. and that's the that's more important to him than winning super bowls fresh off the presses the dallas cowboys are the first 10 billion dollar valuation team in, any in sport, sports in sports hot and, off the press and that's what jerry won't jerry is a so business jerry, jerry was a businessman before yeah. he came to dallas and the, and he's a He's the Dallas Cowboys business, and the Dallas Cowboys business is the most successful business in sports. The Cowboys lose every year. Yeah. Jerry wins every, every year. year. And uh, that's strange, isn't it? Yeah. Jerry's getting that dub Jerry, every year. Jerry's a wizard. Jerry is and smart. The, he's figured out that how to make he media. He has a depreciating product on the field, but a, but an appreciating product, product off the at field. the bank. At the bank. How do you have a product on the field that's constantly losing? Well, you know, I told one of my friends constantly that one time. They said, Ron, losing. Do you know what one of my friends and told me one constantly time? Constantly growing value. He told me, he said, Ron, I don't see you around this place, never our place no more. I said, man, you probably see me at the bank. Man, catch me at the bank. That's why you got to catch Jerry. Bank, it's Jerry oh. said, catch me at the bank, man. Why y'all talking about Dak and CD, all that? I'm yeah. talking about business. Bank. See, you know, up. see so, this is yeah. the thing. As long as that, as long as Jerry is winning there, he don't care. He don't really care, man. He really don't. You know, the, the I mean, the, the Super Bowl the Super would be is a cherry be on top. A, a, yeah, yeah, a cherry. It's not even ice. It's cherry on it's top just, of just him. A cherry on top of you know, a twenty inch round cake. As far you know, as if this, you got a big cake, a little cherry, that ain't much at all. Yeah, that's what Jerry got. He got the big cake, and if he win the Super Bowl, that's a little cherry in the middle and, of a big cake. And unfortunately, he is the business model for the NFL. Yeah, and everybody want to be like Jerry. The Pittsburgh Steelers are the model football organization in the NFL. And that's my opinion. And I don't see how anybody could think any differently. They've had three head coaches. They have six Super Bowls. Only reason they don't have the most is because of one man named Tom Brady and the things he was able to do with his teams in New England. But as far as how you run an organization... Oh, yeah, they do. But, but as and, far as and, how you and, make and, money... And buy-in from the guys that you bring to your organization... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Guys want to be lifers when they hit that Steelers that field up in Pittsburgh. They want to stay with that team for a lifetime outside of A.B. and 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 and, uh, and, and, and uh, Bell. Well, you know A.B. Tavius Bell. Uh, uh, no, uh, no, uh, no. What's his uh, name? Uh, Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, Le'Veon. Oh, well, you know, you know they a, had a great interview. A.B. is the exception to a lot of cases. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I love A.B. Man, I oh, think yeah. I think A.B. I love A.B. talent, and you know what? A.B. is really he's a lot more intelligent than people give him credit oh, for. Hey. He might not say the right words all the time, but AB ain't no he ain't no dumb jock. No, no, no. He ain't no dummy up there. Intelligence and smart is two different things. Very true. That's like he's book smarts. Book smarts and street smarts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 very intelligent. Mm -hmm. But for, for but for making smart decisions and doing smart things, not so much. Split second decisions, that ain't what it is. Yeah, no, no. But yeah, man, these cowboys, man, you know. We gonna see what we come with this year. When, yeah. uh, I tell you this right now. I'm gonna tell you what we are gonna come with. My, my <laughs> I can tell you already. My expectations for Dak are so low; it don't even matter what oh, he do. Like I'm, it makes oh, yeah. me sick to my stomach to see him roll out. Because what I don't want to see know. is another video, or, uh, another clip of Dak doing this right here. I can already tell you what they're gonna do. They don't get about 12, 13 wins. They don't get about 12, 13 wins. You know that face? Yeah. What's that? Going home. What face is that? Going home. 
We just first. lost in the first round. We're going but in, home. The, in the second quarter, though. Going, going home. Second we, quarter of the game. It don't matter what quarter. That's the going. They going home. I can tell you now. Dallas Cowboys is going to win 12, 13 games. Tied us in that and, face, and, and if they and if they are uh, play like they did last year in a numerous areas, including quarterback and D line and all that, we're group, they're going to be twelve or thirteen wins. First round playoff loss. Man, that's look, the expectation. I'd rather I'd rather let Trey Lance struggle. Uh, go uh four and whatever because we already got low. Y'all are, already got low expectations for Dak anyway. You know, Dak is keeping us from getting high draft picks. And his contract is keeping up, keeping us from uh, getting free agents. So, I mean, bruh, like, you killing us, dog. <laughs> like, when you signed that contract, I was mad. The one thing I was mad about in that contract was the no-trade clause. At that point in time, I said, this fool's holding us hostage. And his leg is broken. Remember, his bro- leg was oh, broke yeah. when, oh, yeah. when he got, like, how do we do this, man? We, we had a chance right then and there to hit the reset button. Reevaluate this thing. Cooper Rush, come take the reins, bro. Let's see what you can do for now. You know? And, and, and by now, we could have already had the system in place. But instead, we go and do what we do. Now, CD is pissed off. Now, Micah talking about leaving. His brother having to tweet out every single day, dang near, talking about, hey, you know, Michael about to be up out of there. You ain't valuing your team. He, his brother got something to say every day. And I read him. You know what I'm saying? Well, Michael swears it ain't coming from him, but well, well, you know, but this is the whole thing Come about on. all these guys got to, you know, this is a, this is a, this is the thing. When you want top money, you got to get a top play. Yeah, no doubt. Including Michael, no doubt. You can't get. I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this: Michael want to be the highest paid defensive player. You can't let Trent Williams whoop you like a dog and then want to be like that. And he done did it three times. But I mean, He's look. Not, I mean, you can say what you want no, to. I'm not, I'm not saying nothing about, about, about Mike. I ain't trying to make no excuses for him. But as a defensive coordinator, if I know that teams are going to scheme to block, to kick my guy out, if I keep lining this dude up on the end, he didn't come here as a defensive end, right? He came here as a line, he's Penn State linebacker you. Came here as a I linebacker, know, know a fast linebacker. I know all Ran a four three as I a linebacker, and we put him. I know. We put him fingers in dirt. Some plays we got him on the edge, like he ain't an edge guy. He's not gonna set the edge. He's too light for that. He's the guy that comes around the guy that sets the edge and makes the tackle. Okay. That's what Micah does. Okay, but and I'm gonna tell you that's something. what he should be doing. And I'm gonna tell you something else, Micah does. What's that? He get twelve sacks in the first eleven or twelve games, yep. and then get no more the rest of the year. He, you playing in the same position, yep. you playing in the same scheme. Yep. It ain't no excuse for that part. Get some sacks when it count. The same way you got. See, just the same way that get a uh, uh, plays again. Michael get all against New York and all that. Uh, he he crawling. Set him but up against for success. The, but it, but against the good teams, he don't do that. Set him up for success. He, he in the same position. Put Michael Parsons outside of a defensive end. He was outside when he get when he got the sack. Whatever position, this is the same thing. I hear Wait what you're, I hear what you're yeah, saying. I don't no. disagree. Yeah. Okay. That's, but that's what I'm, I'm also saying. saying is, coach, put him in a position to succeed. Okay. Don't put him at defensive end. He's okay, not a Michael, defensive end. Michael, do the do the do the do the same thing in the last five games you did in the first twelve. Oh, we talking do about the same December, thing. January yeah. when it get yeah. real grimy. You yeah, know, but then yeah, he don't do that. That's all, all I'm point saying. Point is that the Cowboys in in big games? I haven't seen one of the Cowboys play big time ball. Me personally, over the last three or four years, Man. when it came time to play big games, they all shrunk down. Man, so. So I'm just saying. Well, you know, to me, CD can't throw the ball to himself. No, uh, Brandon Cooks can't throw the ball to himself. Okay, uh, I've seen Zeke show up in the past. Yeah, you know, no, no, no. Uh, Pollard when he was here, I saw him show up in the past, right? You know, I'm just saying. A, let's talk about you know, something com- about common the Cowboys. denominator. The is Cowboys Dak. has got a lot. Common much. denominator. They got is more Dak. problems than than he than was Dak. here with Jason Garrett. He was here with Mike, uh, uh, what's my guy right here? Uh, Mike McCarthy, right? He was with Dak, Cooper Rush, anybody else that's played quarterback. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, anybody, Pollard, Zeke, anybody else that's played running back, Dak was there. All the tight ends, Dalton Schultz, Jason Witten, the, the, the guys we got now. You know, Dez Bryant, CD Lamb, Amari Cooper, uh, all the receivers. All of them got one dude in common, and it's Dak, period. Common yeah. denominator. 
That's how I look at stuff. I'm a math guy. Yeah, yeah. That, that Me points too. Out to I'm me a math than guy too. Else. You got 12 sacks in 12 games, and the last five games you get none. You don't play big either. He wasn't here that for either. he wasn't that here for that first four years, was he? Well, had no, to do I'm, with, I'm, I'm had talking about. To do with I, I, I ain't talking about Dak. No, I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about Michael. The Cowboys. I'm, though, I'm talking about the years that he's been here. He do the same thing every year, and and you can go check my stats. Absolutely. And, and, and when he play against uh, uh, Philadelphia. San Francisco, he does nothing. Philadelphia last year did a good job scheming him out of the game. Year before that, he did something against Philly. But last year, he didn't do nothing. He done played San Francisco three times. Every time I see him, they t- after the game, Trent Williams is the greatest player ever. After he played against the Dallas, and I see Michael Parsons getting up off his butt every time. You are a pro. Figure out, for every move, it's a counter move. Absolutely. You can't let this same guy. I'm, t- I'm just saying, the Dallas Cowboys, that is a problem. I totally agree. Yeah. But we got more problems primary, than that. Primary hopefully, issue hopefully that. these guys right here that's, that we bringing in, they won't do like our, our defensive line did last year, jump off, line up offside in the playoff game yeah. in the first series. Then uh, just like the three and outs, our defense did a lot of three Big and outs. John ends. Phillips, yeah. six, six, yeah. three, forty. Hopefully he won't do. Ooh, yeah, but anyway, Dallas yeah, got lots look, of problems. And this it. is the thing. Jerry ain't worried about none of them. Because no matter how bad that Dallas is, ten billion. Je- See, this is the ten this bees. Is what, this is where people getting it mixed up. No hey. matter how bad Dallas is, Jerry is great. Yeah, D- Jerry, Jerry great. keep winning. Jerry See, because winning this is year. the thing. Jerry is not a businessman. He's a business man. Dak beat Brady <laughs> the year after Brady won the Super Bowl. The first year he came to Dak's division and won. I don't want to hear about Dak beating Brady. That wasn't the same Tampa Bay team. But that's a Dak didn't that beat Brady. Year. Tampa Bay beat Dallas. Yeah, that was Let's one year. Let's get away from these individual but, guys. But Dak's lost to San, Dak lost to San Francisco. Christian McCaffrey had forty five yards or uh, thirty five yards rushing. Demo Samuel in the same game had forty five yards receiving. Dak lost that game, nineteen to twelve. One guy can't lose a game. You got eleven. That's when you when your quarterback rating is fifty three. One when, when your quarterback rating is 53 and you're throwing a pick six and you got picks and you ain't doing nothing yet. The quarterback so, is a major see, thing. He touches see, the ball the, every offensive see, play. See, so this all, is, a quarterback can absolutely lose a game. Okay. okay. A, quarter, a quarterback can't lose a game? Okay. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're saying a yeah, quarterback can't yeah. lose a game? I'm going to agree with so, you. So why don't they put Trey I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to agree with you. A quarterback can lose a game. Absolutely a quarterback Lamar can lose Lamar lost four and won two. Lamar lost four. He, he, had, he do the same thing in the playoffs Dak do. Your quarterback got three, two, three or four turnovers. Lamar, Lamar has something to look for. He's got ability. Dak doesn't have any. Name me it one. It doesn't matter about me your one ability. Strange, let me, name a, me one plus see, trait. Here that we Dak go. Has. Here I'm we asking, go. Here we go. Can I ask you that question? No, no, no. I, I, I asked you a question what first. What was your question? Did Lamar lose his playoff games the same way Dak lost his? Not the same way, but yes, I, I, he lost I mean, them. he lost them. Yes, he, he lost. lost them. Okay, that's all I want to know. That that, well, that it don't matter how good you look, how pretty you run, how your throws look in the air. If they end up in interceptions and you run look real pretty and you fumble and the other team win, you are the problem. Does rain and snow and wind matter? Cold weather, does that matter? In Baltimore? Here come the excuses. Versus a 74-climate okay, 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 wait a minute, stadium. wait a minute, wait a minute. So, <laughs> you so saw pick six wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Line. Okay. I'm but, just saying. But when the other team playing in the same weather? When the other team that he lost to, hey. they was in the same weather he was in, right? Pat Mahomes? It doesn't matter. He was in the same weather. He got two MVPs. He's the MVP. We're talking, we talking the GOAT, current GOAT. You'll go to excuses. Versus Jordan you're, Love. You'll go to excuses. Versus Jimmy Garoppolo. What about Ryan Tannehill? Versus Jimmy Garoppolo. What about Ryan Tannehill? Brock Purdy. What about Ryan Tannehill? What about Justin Herbert? I'll take Ryan Tannehill over Brock uh, over, over th- Jimmy Garoppolo. That's his only playoff I'll win. Take That's over it. Dak. Ryan Tannehill <laughs> only playoff win is over Lamar Jackson. Hey, Justin Herbert good. only playoff win is over Lamar Jackson. I take both Lamar of them guys Jackson. Over Dak. Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott get the same results. I don't care how pretty they Ryan, look. Ryan Tannehill had nothing to do. With Tennessee's defense that year. Okay, go there back we and look go. at that defense. There we go, but he was the quarterback. Go back he's and look at the com- defense. He's a common denominator. Go back he and look at the defense. We using, I'm using your uh, Ryan Tyler here was a common denominator. Was Green he Bay's t- defense He touched the ball every play. How good was he Green Bay's defense? He touched the ball every play. Yeah. Here we go with the excuses. No excuses. For the guys we like, it's a lot of excuses for the guys. Lamar Jackson hey. and Dak Prescott is 2-5 and 2-4 and and in the playoffs. That's not That's, a conversation. Yes, it is. 
Because they got the same okay, results. Okay, so I answered your question. They got the same results. I answered your question. Name me one plus attribute Dak Prescott brings to the table. One. It doesn't matter. I'm, that's not an answer. I'm asking for a question. Uh, it doesn't matter. How do you answer that? What if I say? That ain't an answer. I, yes, it I, is. I answered your question. Yes, it is. It doesn't matter it doesn't what matter. attributes you bring. If you lose, what is he good at? What is Lamar good at? Running, throwing, everything else that it takes to be a quarterback. What is that so good at? So what has it got him? Losses. I don't care about what you yeah. got. So you can't no. answer my question because he's not good at anything. Oh, yes, he is. My point proven. He, no, no, no. He, well, tell me he, what he's plus at. He's plus at starting for the Dallas Cowboys. He, He's number. His, his, That's not his, a skill. His, his contemporaries, not, not Jonathan. Skill. His contemporaries voted him number 16 out of the 100. That's and not Lamar, a skill either. Lamar got voted number two. So you can't name a skill is what I'm hearing. What's that? You can't name one skill that Dak has that's Completion good. percentage. That's not a skill. Yes, it is. Completing the ball is a skill. Five to seven yards away? Five or seven yards. Yeah. Well, how come he averaged more completion than, uh, than Lamar Jackson? Because he's completion. throwing bubble screens to, to C.D. Lamb for half it, the game. It doesn't even matter. And, when, and, and five yards. See, see that's the whole that's thing. Led the I'm going by yak. numbers. Yards after catch. This is all I want somebody to do. C.D. Lamb led the lead, league in yak. That improves Dak's numbers. Thank you. That's yeah. all I'm saying. All, all so, I'm saying. With that being said, all, we'll move all, on. All <laughs> no, no, I'm not on All I'm saying is that it don't matter how pretty you look doing something. When you get the same results, it don't matter. It don't matter because even some guys in that 100 meters had a pretty form to know allow, but they lost. Dak ain't that dude. Neither is Lamar. That's all I'm saying. Lamar and Dak is the I'd same love to guy. Have Dak down. They are not the same guy. Oh, you got to they got the same there. results. Yeah. Same results is Dak the same and guy. Every other quarterback besides Pat Mahomes Dak, has the same results. No, well, no, 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 they don't. Dak and no, every they, other quarterback no, no, they besides don't. Pat no. Mahomes and Justin Burrow have no, the same, and Matthew Stafford have the same results. They've no. all lost in the playoffs. No, no. Period. No, not, not with more turnovers than they got games. They got the same results. They got more turnovers. It don't turn- matter how pretty okay. it is. Okay, that's what, okay, okay now they you all agree. Got the same now, results. now you agree with me. They now all, you, got, they all now, got the same results? Now you agree with me, right? Now you agree with me. You agree results with matter, every not how you look. In the league, not how you look, exactly. Every I, quarterback in the league. This is what I said besides earlier. Besides Pat Mahomes. Not I said Lamar. that earlier in the conversation, so didn't let's, I? Let's not didn't, just didn't call I say Lamar that? But that don't mean that Dak did, and Lamar are the same. They got the same results. Okay, well. Until you get different results, uh, you got to separate yourself from somebody. Geno Smith and Dak are the same quarterback then. Exactly. Right? Okay, and uh, exactly. Baker Mayfield and Dak are the same exactly. quarterback. Exactly. All right, so they're all the same quarterback. Exactly. Period. It's only two or three guys. False. I said that at the start of the conversation. It's only two or three guys that separated themselves from the rest of them, and Lamar is not one of those two or three. I don't agree. They ain't the he same ain't got no playoff wins. He, he ain't been. He ain't got no. He got two playoff wins and four losses with with uh, nine turnovers, is, six games, nine turnovers. I don't understand what he's done. Is he a better football player than Dak? He ain't accomplished more. Yeah, I don't care how good you are. You're none of your I, I, questions. It doesn't matter how none good you are. That yeah. means, yes, he's a better football player. No, it don't. No, it don't. <laughs> I can't tell. But this is the thing. You can you can say that some of those guys is a better sprinter and now that I know a lot, but they didn't win. Until he <laughs> until he win, he's the same but guy. But they're not a better sprinter. If you know, he, if, Tobago was a better sprinter that day. In, in the 200, but not in the 100. Yeah, I said that day in the 200. Yeah, yeah. So, I said that day. I was until you it. separate yourself. From other people, you're the same as they are. Lamar has separated himself from Dak with two MVPs and a garbage roster around him taking him to the playoffs. A garbage roster? Around him. Outside of his own offense? Yeah. Okay. Name me name me an impactful player Lamar's had in the past, his whole career. Lamar's the greatest ever. He's the best. Can't answer he, that question no, either, can you? No, no, nobody <laughs> has done <laughs> anything. Okay, we'll my see this. Proven. No, 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 my your point is, no, my point is proven because he's two and four. He two and four. He two and four. It don't matter. Zeke. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All that don't matter. Dez, see, because, see, because this Jason is Jason Witten. See, now he see, here's my here's my here's my here's my thing. When you talk about the people you like, oh Lamar did this, Lamar did that. Now you're bringing up other people yeah, because you're generalizing. You're making general statements. And no, I'm no, I'm not. Specifically to skills. Two, two and Skill four sets. is not general. Skill Nine sets. turnovers is facts. People mouth. I'm going by numbers and what I see. Only Every one. time I see Lamar play in the playoffs, he disappoint me because I'm pulling for him. You said and he played bad. You said Jalen Hurts ain't bad. better than Dak. Jalen went to the Super Bowl. I didn't say any, any, I didn't any, say Jalen Hurts wasn't better than Dak. But this is the thing. Than you can be physically 
better, but uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. He's been to the Super Bowl. That Anybody that's better won a playoff that. game. Lamar gone. ain't been to the Super Bowl. So, Jalen yeah. Hurts got yeah. more than two playoff wins. I bet, I bet you Jalen Hurts got more than two. Greater. I bet you, I bet you Jalen Hurts don't have more turnovers than he played games like Lamar. Lamar get all the accolades with no results. Dak had 15 picks in seven games two years ago. Eight games You're talking two about two ago, years huh? ago. What about last year when he played all 16? Okay. He had nine. All right, well, let's put the last two years together. That means he has 24 turnovers in what, 24 no. games? No, that was three years ago. No, no that when was. he threw them picks, that was no, two that years was. ago. No, no, that was three years ago. When when he came, when Cooper Rush came in and played for him? Okay. That was two years ago. Okay. You go look at it. Go look up. I, I done put up all the stats. How to put <laughs> and and Dak it might have been three. This time flies. <laughs> yeah, fun, yeah. Thank man. you. Not too much fun. Because over the last fun. five years, Dak Prescott has that one of the highest quarterback rated. See, we go by numbers. I go by numbers. I don't go by who I like. Dak don't play for the Colorado Buffalo. So yeah, man, absolutely. Talk about him no more. Yeah, well, let's, why everybody yeah, let's on go. my boy Dion right now. Huh? What's Look going on? Dion is hard to like him sometimes. Oh, by whose judgment? I love Dion all the time. Dion is just by my what, judgment. Sometimes that's Dion, confident. He's got confidence in himself. No, but I'm and just how saying. Somebody hate I'm on that saying. when he backs it up. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying that. But sometimes Dion do say some things that kind of make you like, uh. I mean, just like when he said that he hate for people to talk to talk. Uh, when he go to a recruit house and he hate for them to bring up money. But that's all Dion talk about is money. But he yeah, don't he, want nobody. I'm he, so he saying said things like that. But yeah. because he don't want to talk to CBS, that's on him. That's gonna hurt his brand. I mean, because he didn't want, yeah. Because if CBS stopped fooling with him, what if CBS said we don't want Colorado on CBS? They can't say that because they, they probably got already did it. Yeah, yeah, they already got the NCAA uh, the uh, schedule. Yeah. Schedule. Yeah. But I'm just saying, it is sometimes Dion do say some things that rub people the wrong way. He I mean, do. you know, I I can't. But I but I that don't mean I don't think he's a great father. I I, I don't said that Dion is a great father. Why but why so, do people want to see him fail? Because people want to see everybody fail. But why? Is that because people fail? And they like to because have... Because they, they have want, failed. They want, they they want, want, they want company. company. They want company. Misery loves company? Misery loves company. Okay, that's why That's why I'm confused about it. You know, I yeah. just... You know, I, like, love I love to win, and I love to see people win. I love oh, to see Tom Brady. See, I wish Tom Brady come back and win see, another Super Bowl. See, that's the whole thing. Winners you love know? winners. And the, yeah. yeah. I ain't down with Dak all the markers. Ain't nothing with them winners. Yeah, I'm down with them all, but Dak... <laughs> Uh, until Lamar win, win yeah. ain't down with it. When he win, I'll be down with it. Want some MVPs? Yeah. I'm doing that. Yeah, MVPs voted nah, for. Nah, man, I just don't but understand what's up. You know, I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to Colorado. I, I think they're gonna be good this year, man. Uh, I know six, they got they got six, voted six, what last in the Big Twelve or something. They said they were gonna make it predicted to be last and next yeah, to last you know, in the Big Twelve. They said that all the time. Yeah. That's hey. I, I think uh, I think Colorado got a chance to be bowl eligible. I think they're gonna be really good this year. I think they're gonna surprise a lot of people this year, huh? They are very talented on the outside, and I think, you know, depth it, matters. If they can stay healthy, and that, that's a big factor, but I think that's deeper than they were. The outside problem last year. The inside was the that's problem. That's what I'm saying. That's what, but, that, but they're even more talented on the outside yeah, this year. But, but if you don't and have now, the, but, but you yeah. got to. I don't care you know, how many wide receivers and DBs and stuff. If that line ain't clicking. They got the number the one old lineman out of high school last year, right? Okay. And the guys there right now that they got through that transfer portal oh, yeah. are much better than him. Yeah, and they got to play together. Jordan Seaton, he's yeah. no, he's nothing to. Yeah, you I know. I'm predicting. I'm predicting that Colorado win. Uh, be bowl eligible. They'll get six, seven games. Six, six, seven. That's it. Six, six or seven. They finna not be no chin and one. I give them. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know because I don't know enough about the the other teams that playing. And matter of fact, let's look at the schedule. So they got. Let me see what we got up on this schedule, man. I, you know, I had it, I I mean, had, you know, I had it ready for it. So they got... Yeah. I'm a, let's go game by game. We'll go game by game. North Dakota State University, that's going to be a tough game. I know that's Division Two. They are a powerhouse in Division Two, and I'm sure they would love to come in and beat Deion Sanders, you know? That's a lot of publicity for that organization, for that, that school. You know, that's where Carson Wentz and Trey Lance and uh, uh, my boy Jordan Love. Oh, yeah, they all came out of there. Yeah, North, North, yeah, North Dakota. North, North Dakota, North Dakota, North Dakota, North Dakota State University. So. And then, uh, so they got them. I, I, I'll give Colorado that win. I think Colorado's going to beat them. It's going to be tough because that is a team coming at you, yeah. not just a couple guys that can go. That, that's a team yeah, coming at you. The they got a lot of tough games. Uh, I feel they'll beat Nebraska again this year. Uh, I feel they'll beat Colorado. The thing about Colorado this year, uh, Colorado State, State. Uh, thing about Colorado, they're not gonna sneak up on anybody this year. Now no. uh, they got a better 
Uh, well, they got, the they first got two or three online, games last year but, that this nigga won't know about everybody. Yeah, and, and they got Sherman as the uh, as the offensive coordinator calling the play. So I think he's going to be a lot better for him as well. Uh, but uh, I think that's his last name. Uh, and then they got Baylor. Now, that's going to be a tough one. I can't, I can't give Colorado that win, but I got three wins right now. Uh, South Dakota's a powerhouse now, are they? Yeah, South Dakota has always been a powerhouse. No, I know North Dakota was, yeah, South but Dakota I, know, too. I ain't know South Dakota was, yeah, too. South Dakota, wow, that's crazy. like Appalachian State is always yeah, a powerhouse. Yeah, I know. South Dakota, North Dakota, Appalachian yeah, State. Appalachian they, State. They yeah. might be the Division One team anytime. Yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah. doubt. Because I remember when Appalachian State came up, beat Michigan out of nowhere. I mean, I got to, you know, I... Uh, UCF, that's not going to be an easy game. Got them Florida boys going against Florida boys, but I, I think Colorado Florida yeah, boys are going to step it up. Going win that game. I give them four wins. That Kansas State's going to be tough. tough. Arizona's going to be tough. Can't give them that one. Arizona's yeah. going to be tough. Can't give them that one. Cincinnati's going to be tough. You can't. Uh, well, yeah, but they're different now. Uh, they, they, Their coaches, they don't have the same coach they had oh, okay. when they went you know, crazy a few years ago. I give Colorado that Cincinnati game. Uh, at Texas Tech, it's going to be tough. Uh, tough environment to play in. Uh, but I'll give Colorado that game. All right, I'll be... So, right now, I'm at... Uh, seven games. I'm at four wins for show. Maybe five out of the first seven. Right? <laughs> maybe five. Yeah. yeah I did, uh, so, about four. Uh, four four for show. Maybe yeah, five. Okay. State, then they got, then we got Utah. Right? Got Utah. Utah, Utah but they played them very well last year. I think they can beat Utah no, based I'm off how they played them. But they you know Utah going to have yeah. some boys. See, it's, it's, it's so many of these games yeah. that can go either way. That's why I'm going to say six or seven. That makes it great. You game. know, every game not gonna, yeah. might not go your way. And I'm going to tell you like this. If they become bowl eligible, that's, that's, a, that's a great year. I give them, I, I say, nine, ten wins this year. Eight to ten wins. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. I give them eight to ten I wins, I give them six. Man. Since we're going to use the two, I give them eight, eight wins at the most. Eight to ten wins. Yeah, I no give doubt. them six to I, I yeah. give them six to eight. Because yeah. it's going to be some tough games. And it's going to be tough. Not, they got yeah. Oklahoma State at the end of the year. That's yeah. going to be a tough yeah. one. But I, I definitely expect them to make a bowl. Yeah, uh, I do. Their expectations. And, and, you know, like I, my homies on the staff, shout out Ray Forsett. That's my bro, man. Grace Prep, original, baby, from Mulberry, Florida. Out there with the Florida boys, you know. Uh, up in up in Colorado right now, and um, he said they're going for a national championship this year. When I talked to him, when I was out there last year, you know, it, it, he was like, "Man, just wait till you see what we got coming in." I wouldn't expect wise. nothing else to come out of his mouth. Oh, for sure, no doubt. But you know, I'm gonna have we have straight up conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, it, just... and I only say this, and you know, I'm not saying his expectations are my expectations, but that's their expectations. Oh yeah. You know, I got it. I'm, I'm. You got to show me something. I got to see it. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. I got to see it. Yeah. And. Uh, but I, I do like what they've done. They've got oh, yeah, some really I good running like, backs in there this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. And you know, they, 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 are, they are a more physical team this yeah, year. Yeah, they, they, they got were. some bigger people. They got bigger guys. The O-line looks ready. Uh, it's it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough, man. Yeah, but like I say, I, somewhere between six and eight. Yeah, if, I, I agree with you right there, Trip. The Ghost. If they beat K-State, they'll win the Big 12. If they beat, because that K-State is that one team every single year. You got you to gotta, gotta strap up. You know, Texas Tech, Texas Tech is going to be tough too, man. Joe, if shout out Joe McGuire. Uh, Cedar Hill, you know, so if you're still out uh, there. Yeah, because uh, Texas and, uh, and if te- you- Texas and uh, who else gone? Texas and OU gone. OU, yeah. Yeah, so that's, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I deflated the, the I, conference I, I a little say bit. This, this gonna gonna conference, be, though. Even at that, it's going to be very hard for them to win the Big 12. Yeah. I, I can't believe yeah. they didn't let SMU back in there in the Big 12. That was that was wild to me, so. Oh, I think SMU, SMU wanted to come ACC. back and they didn't? Yeah. I think SMU is an ACC this year. But uh, that's strange. They could have had Houston. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but you know, yeah. But I, I can see Deion. I, I think Houston is in there. Uh, uh, is he not in the Big 12? They're not in the Big 12? No. Wow, that's crazy. That's wild. Yeah, but yeah I man, mean, it's, it's going to be but, a fun schedule, man. It's going to be I'm rough. I'm going to tell you like this. Tough. I ain't going to say they're going to win it, but the Big 12 wide open, man. Oh, it is. Absolutely. It's wide yeah, open. It's, it's wide open, man. So, so they Colorado got a, good got a chance, chance, man, straight up. Yeah, if they that, come out yeah, there they got a chance. and do what they feel like they're going to do as a team, they have a very yeah, good absolutely. chance absolutely. of winning that thing, man. Tech ain't got a QB they ass transfer. Wow. The, the, Tech don't have a QB. Oh, that's horrible, man. Well, you know. Hey, but if you're out there, man, if you're new to the show, I'm J.A., a.k.a. Jonathan Anderson. This is my co-host right here, Unc Ron Bowler, man. We know the sports of tech. You know, we got several members of the show that aren't here today with us. 
But uh, you know, jump shout out Jonas Bull, shout out first lady of F1, Christiana Yebra. Man, uh, we just came to come and finish this part two today from yesterday. So we running through this thing. But yeah, yeah. man, I absolutely think Colorado's gonna have a much better oh, season. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna win by six, seven, or maybe eight. Eight is eight is my high expectation. Six yeah. is my low. Hey, what what can the people do if they haven't done it already? They can hit that. They can go over there and uh subscribe, man. Yeah, hit that so subscribe. So you can come back button, and holler man. at Arkin. Yeah. And, uh, and then after you do that, hit that like. And then go share with somebody else that's like minded. Hey, if you, you, know, if you like to talk like. smack, if you come in here to talk your ish, you know, don't get your feelers hurt if, if Unc holler back at you. <laughs> yeah. That's how we get down. <laughs> hey, we, it's all love. Hey, we in here hey, talking our hey, ish. You see, you see on the, ish, yeah, baby. You see all that ish I got to talk to Jay. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to talk, talk it right back. I'm going to receive it. <laughs> and I'm going to talk it right back. You know what I'm saying? And that's all and it that's is, is ish. Down. That's <laughs> all it is, is ish. <laughs> That's how we get down to get down. Yeah, hey, man, but anyway, moving on. We're going to keep what this thing there. moving. Next on, man, you know what it is. Let me go on and get my prop, man. If you don't know it, one thing you're going to know about J.A. Okay. Uh-oh. The squad I ride with always since 1982. Shout out Oak Cliff, Texas. You know, shout out Baylor Hospital. I ride with Baylor, too, because I was born in the hospital. But uh, the team I ride with, for sure, every time, every day, is that blue and gold, baby. Oh, hey, uh, if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> hey, 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 I, I, I got something to tell. We're going to sit this right here. Hey, hey, yeah. I'm going to tell J.A. something. I got to tell J.A. something about the Irish. What's that? What's that, huh? <laughs> that you know when the Irish lose, you know why they lose, right? Why is that? Because they don't know how to fight. Ah. Look how, look how, look how he hold his hand. He don't know. Hey, you gonna, he got a hand. You gonna tell Conor McGregor? You gonna tell Conor McGregor he don't know how to fight him? Hey, hey man. Hey. hey, we coming with it. Oh, no. He, we know how to, with it, huh? he know how to fight. Now, now Notre Dame got a. What you want, huh? Now, you know Notre Dame gonna be about. How many games they got? Hey, we're gonna, we gonna come with it, man. We're gonna give a few teams that two piece this year. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got a we chance to win baby. 10. Y'all got a chance to win 10. Hey, we got a chance to compete for that national championship. Because you don't know who's on that roster. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. The Rasta Boys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, shout out uh, uh, Notre Dame, man. We got, I can't think of his name, man. I had, look, man, foreign names, I have difficulty, difficulty with them. But hey. we got a Notre Dame linebacker that's going to make a difference for us this year in that oh. Cowboys uniform oh. Oh. in that oh, draft. Okay. You know, but shout out Notre Dame. No, Dame. Notre Dame. I got... like that win, but it ain't, you know. <laughs> yeah. But shout out Notre Dame, man. So this year, it's going to be a fun schedule. I'm going to keep this right here. I'm going to keep my fighting Irish guy right here gonna post up for a second you know and we start this thing out with them aggies you know uh at a m that's gonna be a very fun environment man i might i need to holler at my boy mark and see if we're gonna get some tickets to that thing because you know that's that's type of environment i want to be in see that see that crowd waving in the first quarter and then just see him sitting down by the third you know that's what <laughs> i want to see you know but if you don't know about a squad this year duke we got his quarterback we got that quarterback from last year. The guy was a stud. Transfer from Duke. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're pretty good. Uh, we're, we're deep at wide receiver for the first time in a long time. Our defense is coming with it. We deep at cornerback. You know, uh, we ready to ball out this year, man. Who is the man? Independent. The uh, that's Miami of Ohio. Oh, okay. I was trying to. That's Miami of Ohio. Yeah, I, we, I, yeah, we, you know, I, you know first what? game, I'm, uh, a win. Second game. Uh, a win. Purdue Boil Boilermakers, Colorado got their best playmaker. A win. Uh, over there playing receiver. I, I call that a win. Yeah. Uh, Miami Redhawks, a win. Louisville Cardinals, we got something for y'all because they beat us last yeah, year. Yeah, I, I was just thinking that. You I know? Know, Louisville always played Notre Dame fairly tough. Yeah, they do. They do, yeah. but uh, we got something for you, though. Okay, that, so. That's uh, my first time. That's five wins. I never knew. Every time I hear somebody say, I always hear Miami of Ohio. I have never heard Miami Red Hawks. I haven't either. Just, I never ever heard. That's why I was. Yeah. Like, who the but you know, my you know Notre yeah. Dame don't respect Miami Hurricanes. Yeah. No. So that's why they did that. Yeah. You know. You know. Or the, the convicts no. versus the uh, 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 Catholics yeah. versus convicts. Yeah. Is that what the game was? Then we got a bow game week week six. Uh, Stanford Cardinals. I watched Stanford beat Colorado in that comeback game. I was at Colorado yeah, for that game. But uh, but they suck. Yo, so that's the number six win. They they had one receiver that just went off. He caught one on Travis Hunter's head. Yeah, I thought that kid was going to get drafted. Uh, mm -hmm. Georgia Tech's always a tough game because they still run that triple option or whatever, and you yeah. got to prepare one week for and a team then, that yeah, prepares. And then they they play each other on a regular basis. 
Anybody you, know? you play on a regular basis is going to be fairly tough. And then uh, uh, Navy midshipman. Uh, I said that's going to be a win. And we got another bye week. And then we play my boy. Shout out Mike Norvell. Uh, this is the one game where I'm always conflicted. You know, I don't know. Uh, if, if Notre Dame is undefeated, I'm going to have to go for Notre Dame. Unless Florida State's undefeated, too. Then I got to ride with my boy Mike Norvell. Mike Norvell was my teammate at Grace Prep, just like my boy Ray. Ray up in Colorado was my old line, and Mike Norvell was my receiver and my strong safety. My senior year, he stayed back a year to graduate with us, and uh, he was our coach. You know, he was a coach on the squad. He just stayed. That was my homie, man. He used to pick me up for school and stuff, man. But shout out to Mike Norvell out in Florida State doing what you're doing, man. Ray, my bro, too, now. Nah? Like, oh, yeah. Ray is my bro. So, you know, these, these are my people, man. I'm, just, I'm very proud of them, right? Out of Colorado doing what you're doing, Ray, and, 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 and Mike, what you're doing in Florida State. I, I let them know every week, man. I'm proud of y'all. That's going to be a loss. I, I predict Florida State to be in the national championship, uh, the, the tournament, by the end of the season. But that'll be a loss. I think it'll be a, a good Florida game. State lost a lot of guys, though, to the draft. But they, 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 they the, the system's in, in, okay, in well, place. Oh, oh, I'm just place. saying, you know. I'm yeah. just, see, I don't know all about the system. Yeah, they all lost like, a 6-7 receiver. They lost my boy up to Buffalo, they that lost receiver. They about four guys uh, in the first round. Uh, Col they lost Coleman, the running back, uh, was really good. They had two good running backs last year. I think they both got drafted. Yeah. Receiver, they had some guys on defense that went. They had yeah. a squad, but the program is in place. Okay. You know, what I expect out of them. So Florida State's going to be really good. I expect Notre Dame, I see one loss. Maybe two, you know, depending on, you know, how, how, Louisville, Notre how they Dame, play Louisville Dame, this year. Notre man. Dame and USC is always, because they because they play each other every year for, yeah. since uh, forever. Yeah. I mean. Long, that's, that's a rival game right <laughs> yeah, there, they've man. Been, that's our rivalry game. They've been USC. playing. I, I remember when uh, seeing O.J. Simpson yeah. playing against, uh, you know, uh, Notre Dame. I mean, even the year that uh, – that uh, Reggie Bush and them played against yeah. um, uh, Vince Young. Yeah, Remember the tush push? Yeah. Yeah, that Reggie Bush, Matt Linett pushed Reggie Bush's booty to get over the line. That was against Notre Dame, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. And oh, then yeah. they went on to play in the national championship. We've had some very good teams for oh, a long yeah. time. And I just, what I love about Notre Dame, first of all, the gold helmets attracted me uh, to them. You know, and back then we had a black quarterback. Uh, we had Tony Rice, right? Uh, we had uh, Rocket Ishmael. You know, we had uh, Ricky Waters. Right, uh, Michael Stonebreaker. You know, it was several guys on the squads back then that I just loved. And I was four years since I was four years old. I loved Notre Dame, but the first thing that attracted me to Notre Dame was the gold helmets. You know, like just growing up in Oak Cliff, Texas. You know, okay. gold okay. was a thing. It still okay. is. Okay, Jay. I still wear a gold. I got chain. one. I got. It is what it I is. Got, I got one question to ask you. What's that? That letter. That letter you got didn't have nothing to do. Well, Notre Dame. <laughs> I mean, I got letters from everybody. Though. I mean, what I'm talking about. I'm but just that was, saying, that was, that you was already, 16, no, 17. No, no. no, you already liked that in Notre Dame. Yeah. Like you say, that was the, that was the chair on the cake oh, when you got that letter. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> Ty Willingham came to my school. It wasn't even just no, a letter. Oh, he yeah, came to the school. I'm talking about. I, just, yeah, I know. Man, I, I played a little football back in the day. <laughs> played a little baseball. I was drafted by the Cubs, man. That's enough of my background. This show ain't about me. None of that. It's about them. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I do love Notre Dame, man. That's my squad. Just, just now, Notre Dame know. recruited them out of high school. I was just yeah. messing with him yeah. about that level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, good times, man. Good times oh, back yeah. in the day before yeah. we had the gray. <laughs> you know? But, uh, but yeah, man, no, I'm looking forward to that season. I know a lot of people don't like Notre Dame. I'm like, J.A., what? You like the what? Now, I, you know what? How? I've always, you know. And I had a big brother that was picking on me when they lost to Colorado. Oh, in that yeah. national championship, oh, well, so that made know, me I, love him even more. You know, you know, I used to uh, like. Well, I, I still like Notre Dame. You know, I know all about the Eric Siegel and Lou Holtz and all that. Man, I like those coaches. Yeah. So you know, when you like the coach, you gotta like the school. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Lou Holtz, man. You know, I I, used to, I didn't know why he did it, but I started doing it when I was a little kid. I reach down on him and, and get a little blade of grass and put it in my mm -hmm. mouth like I was chewing on it, like Lou Holtz. <laughs> oh yeah. You no, know, Lou Holtz still my guy, even though he's had some controversy in his life, but. Hey, who yeah. ain't who ain't man no controversy? You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't here to judge, man. No. Don't you know? Don't don't force nothing on me. Don't try to. It, it ain't gonna go good for you. But uh, yeah, Notre Dame. Shout out Notre Dame. We'll see what happens this year with those guys. And just to let y'all know, WNBA is cracking off tonight. Back oh, at it. The Olympics are over with. The Olympics back is over. Back at it, man. Hey, here come Caitlin Clark. Hey, she coming to <laughs> Dallas in September. Ah, uh, yeah. Cracking I'm off. Go, so yeah. I love to go watch. Yeah, but I'm also. Vegas but is I, coming, and those tickets are like four times cheaper than Caitlin, five times cheaper than Caitlin oh yeah. Clark, oh yeah. even though they're defending, defending uh, WNBA champions. 
So I'm gonna go watch. I gotta go watch our own Arika. Yeah, Arika. Yeah, I want to see her. I, I gotta go Arika. to a WNBA game. Not anyway. your name right yesterday, but I just do. Yeah, because yeah. the game is changing. Absolutely, For man. For the better. Hey, y'all. When y'all get a chance, go check out. If you're in the Dallas area, man, y'all go out to UTA's College Park and just check out that WNBA schedule, man. Go support them ladies, man. They cold blooded, man. Oh you know, yeah. It, uh, if they would have chose the right team. Uh, we would have won by more than one point against France, I believe. You know what I'm saying? But, oh, yeah, but then, you know, like I say, the Olympic uh, committee to me, they was trying to give uh, a lot of those young ladies a swan song. Yeah, no but doubt. Then, but this is the thing. Don't penalize me because you want to get somebody a swan song. But it happened. That's, that's, yeah. that's yeah, the way they sports is, though. I mean, yeah, yeah, but if you... I mean, you know, that's the same way the, the uh, dream team. Yeah. You know, Larry Bird couldn't even hardly play, but they took Larry Bird. Yep. Or his swan song, yeah. and everybody know that Dominique Wilkins or some other people was that should have been on that squad. Yeah, yeah, but Isaiah but Thomas. Enough. Yeah, yeah, should have been on that squad. Yeah, so, but so, so you know, it's always you gonna always have it. Shoulda, wouldas, and couldas. Yeah, and the, and the most sugar wooders, shoulda, wooders, and couldas. A lot of times around the Olympics, it's always something. They should not. They should have known they were four seconds late. They could have known. Talking about they, Jordan they, yeah, yeah, I mean, this is always. They should have let them through the gate. They would have let him because you've been letting me through the gate. Now yeah. you're so you know the silver bullets and cutters around the Olympics is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we yeah. weren't even talking about that. I, yeah, but no, but, that's your it but is, I had to get that off my chest for sure, for sure. But now nah, let me let me put this back on the right screen since we got WNBA up. I'm confusing the people. Yeah, got WNBA up with Notre Dame Same in the in background. The background yeah. <laughs> that's my fault. But um, but no, nah, man. So yeah, looking forward to the to the rest of the WNBA season. This has been very exciting to this point. Uh, watching Caitlin Clark go out there and do what she's doing, watching Angel Reese go out there and get Dude. them double doubles, and then watching Arike go out there and capture everybody's attention points in, in the, the second, second half, half. You know, oh, against my. the U.S. Olympic team that uh, didn't pick them. She got snubbed for the second time. You know, uh, yeah, that's the Olympics like, have happened. That so. look like three young ladies should that'll be on that next time. For uh, sure. They better be. They better hey, if Arike ain't on, ain't on there for sure. It's gonna be some furniture moving. You know, and yeah. if Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark ain't there, it's gonna it's be crazy because yeah. Angel Reese is averaging a double double right now. Caitlin and, Clark, and she got a double double against the Olympic team. Yeah, yeah, and, and Caitlin Clark averaging the most assists yeah. of anyone in the league right now. She got like yeah. eight point, eight point something assists, eight point four, eight point. And that's what like. I wanted to see. I mean, you know, because this is the whole thing to be a dominant player. Yeah. You gotta have more than one steal. So. Man, and I'm glad to see. nobody talking about Kaylin Clark passing Pass. ability in college. Yeah, you know, they're talking yeah. about that Jay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's all that they long were, range. Yeah, and <sighs> I was, yeah, they were they were just uh, oh, she shoot the she shoot the three, she shoot the three, and I'm yeah. saying if you want to be an all time great player, you gotta you gotta do several things. You gotta yeah, do more more. yeah, hey oh, yeah. man, hey, Kaylin Clark got some muscle tone too. She ain't no little girl. She, she been to gym. She took a picture with uh Aaron she, Judge the other day yeah. when she up, was up in New York. I'm talking the girl ripped up and her legs are, you know. Six got, months ago, they, they them, weren't like them that. Horse legs. Six you know, months they, ago, they weren't they like that. They big up top yeah. and skinny around them ankles. Six months ago, they weren't Yo, like that. I see you, Don't, Kayla. What, are, what did I say? Work, girl. What did we say? She got to get in that weight, bro. Yeah, the and, good, and, good weight. And, and, yeah, and, and, good weight. And then all them all them hard picks and all that. Yeah. See, because what she going to do one of the next year, when you see the hard pick, she going to do like Kobe did Pau Gasol. She yeah. going to run through your chest. And then you ain't gonna want to sit that many picks on her no more. Yep, not a, nope, not at all, not at all. I mean, she, I think, uh, I think Caitlin Clark has. I mean, obviously she surprised a lot of people because she was oh, yeah. there. I think uh, right before they went on the break, Indiana got up to number five in the power rankings. They was the worst team in the league last yeah, year. Yeah, they started off, in, and then they started off zero and eight. Zero oh, and eight. Yeah, some you some zero oh, and some, and they like eleven and. 13 or 11 and 14 or something like yeah, that. Something so they, like they've been running off some wins and against great teams. They they haven't okay. beat the Aces yet, but they beat the Liberty. They beat the uh, Minnesota Lynx. They beat the Phoenix Mercury, you know? So they 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 beating some squads. Yeah. Oh, oh they beat every, they done beat pretty much everybody yeah. except for one or two teams. Except for them so, Aces. Oh, yeah. Well, well, they, 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 they haven't played them yet. Uh, Asia Wilson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's going to be a tough one, man. I oh, don't yeah. know if anybody beating Asia. But uh oh, Cooper, I don't know where she came from. The girl in the Olympics. Oh yeah. But they said she was a former MVP at the WNBA. So that just shows I, that you shows how, how under the, I wasn't how watching. under the radar the WNBA been. Wasn't but guess what? 
They on the radar now. now I know. Now you know who she is. Now I know. Yeah. Man, if so you don't know, now you know. There's a, there's the effect, man. Kayla Clark, Angel Reese, man, the young ladies in Kayla. Bringing, bringing the light. All the Not only is the light these. shining on them, the light shining on everybody. Everybody else. Yeah, everybody. Man. Yeah, man. That's how we, that's how you get down. That's how you get down. So, you know, we uh we got one last little little segment right now that we added to the show. You know, and Unc, I'm gonna let you go first. You know. Let me go on and get this uh get this thing configured properly. And we're gonna call this IMO. You know what IMO stands for? In my opinion. In my opinion. Let me get it, let me get it set. Oh, oh, no, I ain't wanna move that. Y'all see y'all watching me. Y'all watching me work on the fly right now. You feel me? That's how we get down. Yeah, I told y'all he the he the producer, director. I'm just a sports guru. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're gonna call this I M O. In my opinion. Oh, what you got for the people, man? Oh man, you kind of uh, I hadn't thought about this, but in my opinion, yeah, basketball players are delusional. They are the most delusional athletes because they think <laughs> <laughs> no, in my opinion, because they think that they are delusional. And when you hear these guys talk like Gilbert Arenas, and then I saw uh Kenyon Martin, who's Kenyon Martin is on there with, uh, he's not on there with, oh, uh, Gilbert Arenas and, uh, Kenyon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and uh, when, uh, when uh, Kenyon Martin said that he saw it, and basketball players think they're great athletes, and I got something to say. You're not, man, you're not, man, <laughs> because hey. every competition that, that you have among football players, basketball players, track athletes that I have saw in the past, Basketball players, I want to tell you, y'all always finish at the bottom. You can't even get to max speed on a, on a basketball no, player and so then, short. And, and then, you can, then you're not going to run that fast when you wear a size 18, 19. I'm just going to tell you, <laughs> you're not going to run that fast. You ain't going to be that agile. Your Boy. feet too slow. Because hey. I've seen uh, Kenyon Martin. Boy, this got is, them skis. Yeah, this is my point. That they think that they can translate to other sports. I saw Kenyon Martin say, well, yeah, uh, it was some kid playing with his son. And he said, yeah, I told him he was a... a, a a uh, playing the playing the wrong sport, and now he switched from basketball to football, and now he's getting a four year ride, and uh, it has, and, and then Hugo Gilbert. Oh, he doesn't know. Uh, see, our uh, uh, skills translate to football, but y'all skills don't translate to basketball. And then Gilbert said, "Oh, there has there has never been a football player that uh, translate to basketball." Uh, and and I just want to tell you, Gilbert, this you don't know what you're talking about, Gilbert. Yeah. All these guys need to learn more about sports before they talk. Because I think Charlie Ward won the Heisman Trophy for the Florida State and played, played, played quarterback. Absolutely, he did. And then, then what, he, what he quit doing? He quit playing football. Yep. And when it, wasn't he the point guard for the New York Knicks for Absolutely about 10 years, 10, 12 years? Absolutely, he So was. it has been done before. Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson started at what, Washington State? Going back in Washington. In Washington. Then he, went, then he transferred to the – so all you guys just running off at the mouth – and they think that, uh, and I want to see a 611 or six. I, first off, <laughs> I want to see one of you big six foot nine, tw size 22 shoes. What position you going to play? Because first you're too tall. You don't have no leverage. Yeah. And your feet too slow. Yeah. You can't move. You yeah. can only play basketball. Hey. And y'all need to quit trying to diminish other sports. I saw a couple of hoopers on the, back, on the football field. My senior year when they put me in defensive end on third and long. They, they boys didn't touch me. I got to the quarterback immediately. <laughs> they ain't there. You hey, know, like, hey, so I, just, I, get, I get you moving one way, dog. I'm already by yeah, you before so, you realize I'm going the other direction. So, in my opinion, I saw it as a handicap. Yeah, in, in my opinion, these basketball players are delusional that think they can translate to football. Absolutely. That's one of the most delusional things I heard in a long time. Yeah, I, I got to agree with your opinion. <laughs> and it, it don't matter if I agree or not. Oh, that's who does somebody say facts? <laughs> so, in my opinion, the Texas Rangers are not who they are because they did not resign, resign Adolis, I'm sorry, Aroldis Chapman. Aroldis Chapman is a lot more than what you think he is. He brings a whole attitude to the team. He brings a whole confidence to the team. You look in your clubhouse, you see this 6'5 Cubano man that throws the ball 104 mile an hour. You know I get the lead, I bring it home, okay? 
You lose a tenacity. You lose a whole personality, right? In baseball, majority of the game is confidence. It's a neck up game. In every sport. When I go up to the plate and I hit a bomb and I can flip my bat knowing that if they hit me, I got a secret weapon over here that ain't a secret. Everybody know. He going to get you too. You, you bet not hit me? Because you sacrificing one of, one of your guys? guys? Yeah. Like when he hit old boy from the Astros with a 104 mile an hour fastball in that game after Adolis Garcia hit his home run and flipped his bat and they hit, hit him the next time up. They didn't do that no more that series, did they? 104 don't sound too good on the inside of the knee. But he brought a whole attitude to the team. A whole confidence, a whole mindset. That matters. Yeah. That matters. He 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 bought a uh what's it called when the whole team has, you know, when your football team, you know, they're a throwing team, a passing team, you know that's their or if they're a running team, that is their identity. Identity. Whatever, yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, identity. He brought a whole identity, identity to, the to the team, a toughness, a grit to the team. He played for the Yankees. And been successful. Came from the Royals when we got him. And now he's doing it in Pittsburgh after we won the World Series, man. So, in my opinion, the Rangers lost their team when they didn't re-sign a role this Chapman. That's my opinion. And, and, and I can't argue with that because this is the thing. People don't realize this, this one guy can set the tone for your whole. For the whole squad. The whole squad. Charles Haley did it for the Cowboys. Michael Irvin too. I mean, yeah, yeah. Michael but, Irvin did more so. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you this here. If you notice, know you can go back and look. When, when Michael Irvin got hurt in that Philadelphia game, yeah. boy, the Cowboys' whole psyche wasn't like Switched. it used to be. They were killers. Yeah. But yeah, Michael Irvin was... You know, like Thank, I say, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, and Larry yeah. Allen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Aaron, Aaron yeah, Williams. Yeah, they had more than one. On the, on, but the, I, on the O-line. You know, yeah. it's different teams yeah. on a football team. Yeah, yeah. But but, but I'm going to say the number collective one. Collective team? Mm, yeah. Yeah, Michael Irvin, no doubt. Michael Irvin was the number one injured guy. Des Bryant was that guy when he was yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you we, know don't, we don't have that guy right now. And, and then you I have who? Do we have that? Can you think of anybody right now on this team on what team? Wait, would it be Zeke? On what team? On the Cowboys. Man, we As we stand today, we, we don't even have got nobody. We don't even have nobody close to that guy. Okay, I'm just. No, I mean, that's the problem too. Yeah, we don't have no. We don't have so. I mean, you know, Trayvon I, Diggs. I mean, he. I like the way he called that guy. Yeah, but he's not that guy though. He ain't that guy though. Yeah, yeah. He ain't that guy. Okay. <laughs> because this is the, this is the whole thing. When you that guy, it rubs off on other people. Absolutely, it ain't rubbed off on nobody. It, on ain't, them it ain't rubbed off on nobody. On them boys. Uh, but yeah, man, now I appreciate y'all again for tuning in today, man, as we finished appreciate up this show, man. man. Part two of Noonish episode or season 10, episode eight, man. Appreciate y'all. We'll be back next Wednesday sometime around Noonish for show. And if you haven't already, go on and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, like this show right now. Go on and tell somebody no, yeah. about yeah, it, go man. To, go to, go tell you know, somebody. we're growing organically the right way, man. Uh, absolutely, Appreciate man. you tuning in. If you haven't checked out any of the old videos, man, go check us out. Get more familiar with us. This is what we do, man. We'll be back here next week, man. And, and I'm going to say this. We might pop up before next week because this, is, because this is the whole thing. Whenever we have some information, we might pop up anytime. Going to pop it up and pop it out yeah. on you, man. Oh, right. Even if we don't, we just want to talk to the people, see what y'all want to talk about. Yeah, so see what y'all got This is say. an interactive experience every time, but I appreciate this experience this time. Appreciate y'all joining us today, man. We'll see y'all next around time. around Noonish for sure. For sure next Wednesday around Noonish. Peace. We out. Welcome to a realm where the pulse of sports thrills and the spark of technology sizzles. Join Ronald Unk Bolware and your charismatic host, Jay a aka Jonathan Anderson. Together, they unpack the latest in sports and technology. This is Noonish Sports and Tech.